you can still hear the sirens coming in, even as Terry uh, was able to get this uh, information from uh, Kansas City Police Department that put out this statement about two armed uh, individuals that have now been detained. So, Alex, from what you can see, does it look like the situation um, is, is now under control as they are moving the victims out and police say that there have been two people detained. We're now seeing uh, a caravan of buses right now. Not sure where the Kansas City Chiefs are, where the team is, the players. Do you have any idea? And can you see this caravan uh, going across the bridge right now? Yeah, we can see some of the caravan here, Kira. It's behind me and I can sort of point you in that direction over there. Um, it was in that general area that the crowd sort of underneath or near that bridge area that the crowd started to run when apparently those uh, gunshots erupted. Uh, to give you an idea, this was packed with families, children, men, women, all kinds of people who have been here all day. So, of course, you can imagine the kind of panic that begins when you hear gunfire and when you see crowds beginning to run. Uh, the people in the front start to run. Of course, the people in the back start to run. And that creates a massive uh, movement of a lot of people at once. And that's what we saw happen here, Kira. Uh, it's unclear to us at this point just how active the situation is. And it seems from what Terry read there from the police department and what we're seeing from the Kansas City Police Department on Twitter, they're still trying to to figure out what exactly happened at this point. Uh, there appears, according to the Kansas City Police Department, to be some shooting victims and at least two people in custody at this point. Uh, if I move out of the way here, you might be able to see in that direction over there, there's uh, an ambulance uh, with its lights uh, down below uh, there. There are a number of police officers sort of around the perimeter and watching uh, the area here, uh, Kira and Terry. So this is def definitely still an active scene. When this occurred, the teammates, the team, the players here were no longer on stage and as far as we know had sort of evacuated the area. How close they were to the area at the time uh, of, of this shooting remains unclear to us, but they were no longer on stage when this erupted. They were gone, but the crowd was still here and that's how uh, uh, we, we, we noticed what was going on when we saw that chaos and we saw those people running there, Akira and Terry. Of course, uh, this is sort of uh, a, a sad note after what was a very happy day for a lot of people here in Kansas City. They got up early. They came out to support their team. People were here for hours. This first time they have back-to-back -back Super Bowl championships. So people were excited and in a good mood. And this certainly puts a negative, uh, sad note on all of this, uh, Kira and Terry. Uh, of course, this is an all-American event, right? A Super Bowl parade that now has been struck by some kind of, of gun violence as Alex just said, after it concluded, do I have that right, that the event itself was over, Alex, when this shooting uh, seems to have occurred? That's correct, Terry. The event was over. The team had sort of cleared the stage. There were a few people who were still cleaning up and, and kind of picking up things off the stage, and the crowd had already began to disperse. That's when we heard uh, the, the sort of commotion, the chaos, people running, and, and then later found out that there were gunshots uh, just to the west side near the parking garage of Union Station right here. This whole event happening right outside of Union Station. Guys? So just to recap what we know, Kansas City Police, they've been pretty good about putting things out uh, on Twitter, now known as X, of course. Uh, they first uh, did confirm that shots were fired uh, there around the Union Station area. They were asking everybody to leave. Then they followed up saying that they were working to clear the area of Union Station, um, including everybody that was inside the building as well. Uh, they said they were still trying to determine how many people had been shot. So uh, police uh, definitely uh, have, at, at least at this moment, when they put the, uh, the tweet out, that um, they, they were feeling pretty confident there, was, there were numerous victims. Several uh, is the word they used in their press release. All right, several people that were shot. And then we've, we, we, we got some information from our affiliates. Uh, the News Chopper 9, um, we've been taking various footage from the, from the helicopter, actually uh, zeroed in on emergency crews there in the area that were working on at least two people. That's what the affiliate there, Terry, was confirming. We saw one individual being worked 
worked on, but one of the affiliates saying that they actually saw uh, rescue crews working on at least two victims. We saw at least one of them put mm -hmm. on a stretcher taken uh, to the ambulance there. Apparently, uh, according to our uh, affiliate, that police were running towards Union Station after those shots were fired. As Alex mentioned, you know, already it's a big event, yeah. right? There, there are thousands of people there at Union Station in the streets getting ready for this parade. The police were, of course, uh, there, sure. present. Yeah, you know, they have snipers in certain places. They've got to secure the area higher up on the ground. I mean, they're they're is they're used to, to having big events like this, and security These is days, always three put Super in place. Bowls, they've done this a few times. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. But unfortunately, it leaves the opportunity for things like this to happen too. We have no idea mm. uh, who the the shooter shooters are yep. at this point. We know two people are detained. Hopefully, that'll bring about some answers. Yeah, let's bring in our consultant uh, on many, many issues on, on these kinds of incidents. Brad Garrett, uh, formerly an official with the FBI, now our ABC News consultant on many law enforcement issues. Brad, I just want you to train your sensibility on what we know so far. Uh, the fact that this happened at the end, after the end of the official ceremonies, uh, it, it, can one draw from that that the ceremony itself wasn't targeted, that this is something that happens in the spillover afterwards? So probably you're right, Terry, that the event, the actual event itself was not the target. I mean, without knowing one other thing, does this have the flavor of a dispute, maybe between Chiefs and 49er fans? Who knows? or domestic, it, it, it could be any of many things. But the point being, because it's in a Union Station after the event, it, it could be driven by interactions between people, hostilities between people, for whatever reason, and not, not targeting the event itself. And that's important to know, because if in fact it were a target of the event, what are the tentacles to that? Uh, you know, are there bombs? Are there other people? I mean, it doesn't have any of that flavor, of course. I'm only suggesting if it's something driven by interactions, anger, rage between either known groups or people just got mad at each other after the event and some had guns uh, and people were shot. I mean, that does confine it and hopefully some version of that will be true. Yeah. I'm just watching our ABC affiliate uh, there in, in Kansas City, and they are saying that several people were struck, um, that uh, two people are in custody. We reported that, but they are now saying that several people uh, were struck uh, in within that gunfire. Still looking to see if they have any more information uh, with regard to who fired those guns, uh, what led to this, um, but they're... Apparently, uh, Kansas City Fire Department is confirming that the shooting did happen, and they're still calling it a fluid situation, which, of course, means they're still trying to figure out how to contain the whole area, make sure they do have the two uh, and only two shooters in custody while we are continuing to see um, what looks like... Uh, can you see what's going on here the people being cleared from the scene it looks like cleared. brad i, I want to go this is so given the uncertainty and the size of this scene right i mean it we, they have a sense it seems where the gunshots happened but this is a vast event huge scene uh figuring out what happened you know and securing it protecting the people who are first getting them out of the way and, and figuring out that in fact they have the scene secured that could take a while yeah Oh, there's no doubt it could take a while. I mean, there's some key things, Terry, that have to happen uh, immediately. Review of cameras and witnesses, and of course, deep dive quickly, very quickly, into the alleged two shooters. Uh, because all of that may give you a picture rather quickly. In other words, if the cameras tell you that it's one group confronts another, one pushes the other, folks pull out guns, that sort of gives you the flavor of what you might have versus somebody who walks up behind a group or walks into a crowd and starts shooting anyone that's near them, that's probably a different type of event or person. Uh, but the combination of those, because witnesses can be extremely helpful. I get that people are re can be unreliable as to what they tell you at a scene, but I'll tell you dozens of scenes where I have been where there are a lot of people, pieces of information end up being 
accurate. If you can link it to the video and you can link it to information that they may already potentially have on the two shooter, would be shooters, uh, you may have a picture. You want a picture quickly, obviously, to your earlier point of is this just an interaction inside Union Station or does it, is there something more to it than that? I'm going to keep following it for sure. If you're just tuning in, once again, you're looking at live pictures there from Kansas City uh, where the parade was taking place. Thousands of people flooding the streets to celebrate their Super Bowl champs. Uh, Patrick Mahomes was seen holding the Super Bowl trophy, members of the team there. Uh, there was a performance taking place on a stage and then gunfire broke out. We know that at least according to our ABC station there, uh, two people were being worked on, one of whom right there where the police tape has marked off that area. We did see one person being transported to an ambulance and now two people are detained. We're trying to figure out why this happened, who was involved, uh, how those uh, victims are, are faring. We're going to work every angle to this story and bring you the latest details right after a quick break. Stay with us. Whenever news breaks. We are here in Israel, a nation at war after that brutal surprise attack by Hamas. On the ground in Ukraine, reporting from Lewiston, Maine. The scene of a horrific mass shooting. ABC News Live is right there everywhere. From the scene of that deadly missile strike in Dnipro, Ukraine. Reporting from the earthquake in Turkey. In rolling fork, this tornado tore through this little town. From the most devastating disaster in Hawaii. From Charleston, South Carolina, on the 2024 campaign trail. In Iceland, let's go. Yeah with the president in Mexico City. Wherever the story. From the front lines. From southern Israel. Outside the Gaza Strip. In Beirut. From the FBI. Reporting from the nurses on the picket line. Here at 10 Downing Street in London. Streaming live to you. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. We're going to take you there. You're streaming. ABC News Live. ABC News Live. You're streaming. ABC News Live. ABC News Live. Streaming free everywhere. America's number one streaming news. First thing in the morning. There's a lot going on. Yet another avalanche warning that's up. To catch you up with what happened overnight. A dangerous ice storm is impacting the morning commute. What's happening today, escalating tensions in the Middle East. What people are talking about, the migrant crisis. Fast, straightforward. With some fun in between. How does billionaire sound? Sounds good to me. The moose started chasing a dog. First thing in the morning. America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. On ABC News Live. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. Hello, everyone. I'm Terry Moran. And I'm Kira Phillips. We are continuing to follow this breaking news story out of Kansas City, Missouri. What started out as a massive celebration uh, to lift up their Super Bowl champs, unfortunately, uh, has taken an awful turn. Um, we are reporting now and can confirm via the Kansas City police that a shooting did take place. Two people have been detained. Uh, and there could be numerous victims now. Several people, the police department says, were struck by gunfire. We have seen uh, through this high shot from our affiliate, uh, two people put on stretchers and taken away. The police are trying to secure the scene. They evacuated the crowd. The crowd was already departing the, the area. The event itself, the ceremony itself, the celebration had ended when this shooting took place. So let's bring in ABC News correspondent Alex Perez. He is there in Kansas City. ABC News contributor, former chief of detectives for the NYPD, Bob Boyce, uh, and ABC News contributor and former FBI agent Brad Garrett. So Alex, first to you on the scene. What can you tell us? Uh, yeah, Terry, it was uh, happiness and laughter all morning up until the very end of this rally. The rally concluded, the players left the stage, and shortly after that, we noticed chaos on the field here, 
where the crowd had gathered. You might be able to see all that green down there, that field. Well, that was, as you've seen in other images, covered with thousands of people that had gathered, gathered here all day. And when those shots were fired, the crowd began to move as a group. You can imagine the panic and the chaos. There were parents here. There were children here. There were uh, uh, friends, a, a lot of people, thousands of people gathered here to watch this, which was peaceful up until this moment when we heard, uh, they heard those gunshots down there and began running. And right after we saw that crowd, that mob of people start to move away from Union Station. This is all happening in front of Union Station uh, here in Kansas City. We began to hear sirens, both ambulance sirens and uh, police law enforcement sirens. And we continue to hear them. You can probably pick them up uh, in the background here. Uh, from Kansas City Police, we understand they're still trying to figure out what exactly occurred. They know there was a shooting. We know that they say they have detained two people connected to this shooting. They also have said, Kansas City Police, that several people have been struck by that gunfire. Their conditions at this point, uh, we do not know. Uh, this remains a very active situation. You hear all those sirens. Uh, it seems to us authorities are still trying to uh, get a grasp on what exactly happened and also trying to secure the area. Union Station, huge, massive building. There were people in there, we believe. Authorities holding some of those people in there and slowly releasing them as they try to get a good idea of what exactly happened here. Now, uh, uh, Kira and Terry, I can tell you that, uh, you know, the mayor of Kansas City said safety was of the utmost importance to him. Uh, when he spoke about this yesterday, he said they were going to have 600 police officers on the two-mile-long parade route. And also, they were working with 24 different law enforcement agencies to make sure that this entire event, the parade and the rally, was safe. As soon as we heard uh, that commotion and the crowd moving, we started to hear those sirens and officers moving in. So no doubt that response was very quick. But of course, uh, for those that were standing here, uh, perhaps not quick enough because uh, it, it was some moments of panic for a lot of people here. Kara and Terry. Completely understandably, Alex, a heartbreaking moment for, for the city of Kansas City, for the whole country, really, as this day of celebration turns into yet another American gun violence nightmare. Let's go to Bob Boyce, uh, who's formerly with the NYPD. And Bob, I want to ask you what the police uh, are doing right now. I mean, in New York City obviously has handled a lot of cities, a lot of uh, events like this. This is the nightmare scenario, isn't it? It is, and I will tell you, as a veteran of many Yankee Day uh, celebrations, championship ticker tape parades, they can be the crowds can be maddening. A lot of planning goes into these things, where you can get resources to an area quickly. So you have frozen zones, and you have sectors, and you map this out. This was a two-mile run, which is which is pretty challenging uh, in any urban area. So also a post event strategy as well to get people out of there safely and that's what they're doing right now they look at these transportation hubs they're right away you 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 uh you help the aid it's immediately person shot and you try to figure out what's going on through video and things like that in an urban area you have gangs that show up to these things so i'm not saying that's what it is but it's a possibility so these things also have to be vetted out you have high elevation uh, spotters to see what's going on so right now it's 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 chaotic it's getting people to the hospital, getting statements, getting witnesses, freezing up whole areas. That's what's going on right now. All right. So we do have uh, we were able to roll some tape on uh, what it was like uh, right after those shots were fired. Let's go ahead and take a listen. Yep, you could you could hear the shots there very briefly, a series of them, and obviously the people closer to bolted. Other people not quite sure what's going on right at the moment as all of those people celebrating uh, the Kansas City Chiefs Super Bowl championship uh, now uh, heading out, fleeing really the scene. Uh, let's go to Pierre Thomas here in Washington. Pierre, uh, uh, another I should say I want to say shocking, but in some ways it isn't. Is it day? Uh, with gun violence in America. What, what is the federal role here? Have you got a sense? Have they, have they uh, weighed in? Are they offering assistance to the Kansas City Police Department? 
No doubt they will, Terry. Um, I've just spoke to some senior federal law enforcement officials here who are were just becoming aware of this incident. They're trying to get uh, some some details. Uh, hopefully, uh, once they get a summary, often the local police department will send out some kind of summary to the broader law enforcement community. Uh, who the FBI has an office there, uh, ATF marshals. They will all be, you know descending, offering help if possible. And the one source I just spoke to just said, look, this is America. Guns are ubiquitous, which means that this could be anything from tempers flaring to a robbery to something, you know, more sinister. We just don't know yet. But that is the common denominator, that people have ready access to weapons, which means even at something like this, a celebratory event, bad things can happen. So, Bob, question for you. Um, Terry actually noticed it, you know, as we've been following these live pictures from the, the news helicopter. Uh, there was, uh, that we know that, that two individuals have been detained um, in the shooting that's taken place. But there was another uh, man there down on the ground in handcuffs that police uh, were talking to. Uh, didn't see them put him into a police car, but he was handcuffed what what could be that scenario somebody that might have seen something known something it probably it could also be someone who just was disrupting uh, the situation but what could the scenarios be of, of the the man that we did see in handcuffs but not being taken away sure at this point you you really need him to tell you what happened on so he's probably uh, aggressive at first and now you want to calm him down he may be uh, placed under arrest for that um, for acting, you know, a acting out, but you need his information, so you don't want to take him away. So you put him in the back of a car, hopefully, at some point, and you start talking to him there. You need immediate information because people are still at hand. That was a lot of shots I heard, Kira. Um, that's that's it tells me there could be more than one shooter, and uh, with that many shots, innocent people are going to get hit. Yeah. Alex Perez, you're you're there um, uh, on the scene. You know what was a story that you've been covering all day uh, that was all about celebration and uh, lifting up the Super Bowl champs and a massive parade and thousands of people filling the streets has now turned in to uh, a really sad story where there are two people that have been detained and multiple uh, victims after a shooting broke out there near Union Station. Are are you learning anything new? Uh, yeah, Kara, without a doubt, this puts a tinge of sadness on what was a very happy celebratory event. Uh, Kara, we're still trying to communicate with the Kansas City Police Department to get further details. Our understanding from them is that they are actually themselves are still trying to figure out what exactly happened. Uh, we've seen on Twitter they have put out calls for people who may have witnessed something, who may have videos, who may have uh, things they recorded on their phone to submit those to contact the police department. Uh, it seems to us they're still trying to figure out what exactly unfolded here. But as someone said just a second ago, there were thousands of people here. When gunfire erupts in a crowd of thousands of people, there is immediate chaos. There's uh, some people who perhaps are getting trampled as they're trying to get out of the way. And then, of course, you have the gunshot victims that, according to the Kansas City Police Department, there were several people who were struck. So that immediately led to a quick reaction from authorities here on the scene, Kara. There were police officers, police vehicles, um, ambulances, and a number of other members of law enforcement who sort of rushed the scene to try to assess what exactly was going on. Uh, if I step out of the way and you look just uh, behind me over here to the uh, the camera left of Union Station here, you can see there's still a number of officers and ambulances there in that area over there trying to uh, assess this situation. Um, the crowd, for the most part, has dispersed, but still some moments of, of, of chaos remaining for those that are here trying to figure out what exactly happened. We see a, a number of people there around uh, what looks like a police vehicle from the distance here, so uh, perhaps they're also trying to get more information. Uh, this situation, uh, Kira and Terry, really catching so many people off guard. They were here celebrating, having a good time when suddenly gunfire erupted. It's just awful. And once again, several people, according to the Kansas City Police Department, struck by that gunfire. We saw uh, a couple of victims uh, being taken away on stretchers, put into ambulances, and, and uh, we assume taken to hospitals as well. Kansas City, like so many great American cities, struggling with violence. The, the city set a record 
for homicides in 2023. 184 homicides in that city, breaking the record set in 2020. And so this is, we don't know what's happening here exactly, but this is a city that has been fighting, battling to keep the peace uh, on its streets. And we do have, I understand, some, some sound from a witness to what was happening. Let's, let's roll that tape and listen to that. All of a sudden, people started crushing forward. Everybody started running. There was screaming. We didn't know what was happening, but this day and age when people run, you run. And so I put my arms around her, and we tried to push through so people wouldn't run on top of us. And there was a woman crying, saying something about somebody had been shot. Ah, and the Kansas City police, I mean, you can see here next to the woman that was uh, being interviewed, a younger gal next to her. Oh, live pictures now of the drones. You can see, uh, I'm sure uh, the drones captured a lot of images. I wonder if Yeah, indeed... it looked like a balloon there. Oh, like was that? Wind, okay, yes. well, I know there are drones up, apparently, uh, we've been told from our producers. But the Kansas City police saying that a child reunification station has now been set up in the area. As you, we were looking at those uh, two women being interviewed, one looked pretty young. It does uh, bring up the point that, look, there were thousands of people out there, families, fans, and also young kids, uh, many of whom their parents might have been at work, but they came out for the parade. And so the Kansas City Police has now put out a child reunification uh, station in the area. 2301 Main is where that's located. It's inside the main entrance of Union Station. Uh, so if you are concerned that you have not heard uh, from your son, your daughter, your kids, you can um, contact the Kansas City Police. But they're telling you right now that at 2301 Main, just inside the main entrance of Union Station, they've established a reunification uh, area uh, for those uh, under 18 to connect with a guardian or a parent. Because as we just heard from those uh, w women in the sound we just played, that this was a panic, of course. You hear gunfire, you run. In a big crowd, kids get lost, people can get injured, and that was the concern in the, the chaos following the shooting here at, at the rally for the Kansas City Chiefs in downtown Kansas City, right in front of Union Station there. Let's go back to our Pierre Thomas. Pierre, I just uh, had, okay, Bob Boyce, let, let, if, if I could come back to you uh, on, you know, what comes next? I mean, we are still in the, in the middle, the early minutes of this. It does seem uh, that at least on the outside of Union Station, things are under control, but uh, until we hear from the police that there, there's an all clear, this is still an active t uh, shooter situation, yeah? It will be, and it will be uh, an active crime scene. So right now it seems to be under control, but now they have the, uh, the massive tasking of finding witnesses and getting video to find out who the shooters are. First, first things first, you, uh, you give aid to the, uh, to the injured, and that's what they're doing right now, hoping to speak to as many people as they can to find out what created this and how many shooters they are. So right now you're looking for, uh, you're looking for ballistic evidence to tell you how many different guns were involved in this. Uh, that's, that shot was, it looked like it was a semi-automatic weapon, at least, that I heard that, 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 uh, that uh, both gunshots were heard were right successive in a row. So that tells me that that's, someone has a high-capacity magazine when I saw that. So, but that has to be figured out as well. There's a lot of work going forward here, but determining a motive right now is secondary to now claiming evidence and getting statements. Hmm. And, th and that scene is an enormous scene. Uh, uh, they have taken two men into custody. They've detained two people, according to the Kansas City Police Department, armed, uh, they said. So two people armed uh, at the scene have been detained by the Kansas City Police Department. Uh, and law enforcement, uh, we are reporting now, um, the federal, state, and local law enforcement warned as recently as the run-up to the Super Bowl that special events with large attendance and media coverage remain attractive targets. Not sure that they, let's go to Pierre Thomas on that. Our, our Justice Department correspondent. So, Pierre, uh, that warning was put out, it sounds, you know, about uh, potential attacks. Doesn't sound at this point that's what we have. This was after the event ended uh, in the garage area, near the garage, according to the Kansas City Police Department, a series of shots. Uh, well, obviously, we have no motive. We, we don't. All we know is two armed men were taken into custody, and we have several people struck by gunfire. Uh, but this is the kind of thing, as the Justice Department warned, as Department of Homeland Security warned, the kind of event uh, where people are vulnerable. 
Absolutely, Terry. And, and there, there are two scenarios that we're talking about here. Number one, law enforcement has been in a heightened state of alert in general ever since the conflict in Israel and uh, between Israel and Hamas. Uh, they have said repeatedly over and over that the threat environment is toxic right now, that you have various groups calling for violence, rise in anti-Semitism, rise in attacks against the Muslim community. That is what we are dealing with currently. So anytime there's any kind of large-scale event, they are putting out notices reminding local police to keep that in mind. Now, separate and apart from this, where we don't yet know the motive here in terms of why this took place, it's the general issue of so many people, including criminals and so many people with tempers and so many people with mental uh, health issues having access to weapons, it literally means that wherever you have people, you have the potential for gun violence. And that's what we have here at minimum. Uh, authorities are obviously hoping that it's a limited amount of people injured. We still don't have concrete details on that just yet. But again, here you have a celebratory event. People talking about the most watched Super Bowl, their beloved Chiefs wanted the Super Bowl, uh, the dynasty in the making, and suddenly that celebration with children and all sorts of people happily there now running for their lives in some cases after they hear that very clear sound of gunfire. We've been following our ABC affiliate KMBC here, and they seem to be getting a lot of information coming in, uh, talking about the shooting that took place, saying the Kansas City Fire Department does confirm it's still a fluid situation, but our ABC affiliate uh, is reporting that Kansas City police say the shots were fired west of Union Station and that several people were struck. Again, this is according to our ABC affiliate. At least two armed individuals have been detained. Uh, KMBC's uh, reporter down there on the scene says that five people have been brought to Truman Medical Center. Of course, this is according to our ABC affiliate reporting this, uh, and that three ambulances were seen going to the Children's Mercy Hospital's emergency room. Uh, just the thought uh, that mm. kids um, uh, could have been targeted or caught in this gunfire, which brings me to you, Bob, and, and what Pierre uh, was saying, um, that this could have just been a lone attacker with no specific uh, motive, no political motive or, or you know, terrorist uh, motive. It looks like we're going to get one of the affiliate reporters up here uh, pretty soon, so maybe we'll be able to dive in and listen to what she has to say. But this could have just been somebody that, or, or individuals that wanted to inflict harm. They could have been drunk and in an argument with somebody and opened fire. We have absolutely no idea uh, why uh, shots broke out, but we do know that several victims have been taken to the hospital, possibly children, uh, and that two people have been detained after these shots were fired there at the uh, Super Bowl uh, celebration parade. East side of Union Station. Let's listen. Do we want to listen to our affiliate reporter? Let's listen into our affiliate reporter. Okay. While well, we're monitoring, then I guess uh, the affiliate reporter there, uh, Bob Boyce. Um, you know, we have to be very careful. We have absolutely no idea what the motive could be at this point. Here we don't, but we have two persons under arrest with gun for guns. So that tells me the police were really close to this when it happened, which does happen to these things. It's happened to me. You have sh shots just feet away from you. So they made an immediate arrest, and that's important. We don't know if they're the shooters yet or they were just possessing those weapons. But that'll tell us more as we go on. And right now you see that the response was there, but the crushing crowd, you really get lost in the maddening and some of the noise, the chaos. So it's tough to figure these things out initially. It takes a little while to, to break it down. All right. Uh, once again, our affiliate there, KMBC, uh, Matt Flinner at KMBC, uh, reporting that there's police tape up at the University Health Truman Medical Center. He understands five people, he's been told five people have been brought to the Truman Medical Center from the scene there. He also says that three ambulances have gone into Children's Mercy Hospital's emergency room as well. And we do have sound of what uh, appears to be the moment of the, uh, of the shooting itself, if, if there was one, at least one of these shootings, if there was more than one. So let's listen in at the moment the gunfire broke out.
You heard it. Uh, uh, so rapid fire, rapid firing there. Several shots. I wasn't able to count them, and you did see the people closest to it, obviously, just uh, starting to, to, to run from the sound of gunfire as Americans in too many places on too many days have to do. And that is what we are dealing with in Kansas City on the day of the Super Bowl celebration here. Uh, let me go back to, to Bob Boyce on sort of next steps for the police. Uh, if, in fact, they have de detained two men, armed men, and they had, well, first of all, let me ask you this. They've detained these two men. What's the threshold uh, to, for handcuffing? We also saw someone in handcuffs. Uh, police just obviously can't walk up to people and handcuff them, but uh, do you have enhanced authorities in an emergency, in an, uh, emergency situation like this uh, to detain people, to cuff people? Uh, what are the rules for police officers in this emergency situation? Something like this is not only arrest. Of course, they're used for arrest, but you uh, articulate a reason to bring someone under control, even temporary, temporarily, you can handcuff someone. So that might be the issue here. I didn't see it. The big challenge here, Terry, everybody's wearing red. So when you're looking at uh, to, to identify someone in this crowd, it's everybody's wearing Kansas City Chief Red. It's going to be tough for the police on their video to actually identify someone. This is, a, this is a heightened challenge that you don't normally see in a crowd like this. So that's what I'm looking for right now. These two persons arrested for guns could be key players. You check those magazines immediately and see if there are any fresh fires there. And see if they match up to the shell cases you find on the ground. That'll happen quickly. Uh, other than that, you're going to see if they have any uh, criminal uh, um, associations with other people that might have been there. So, Bob, this is far from over. It's not like you just kind of pack up and leave the scene. I mean, authorities, law enforcement are still there having to go through every single individual, check every single individual, move people to certain areas once they're cleared. There's a reunification area now for kids to connect with their parents. So, by all means, this is still fluid, and it'll be fluid for a while because they've got to make sure that, that entire area and everyone present where that shooting was uh, can be cleared, right? They do, and they'll take the witnesses to a secondary location, hopefully inside, because uh, your, your daylight is ticking off at this point. You really want to get as much done as you can while you have daylight. So they'll bring in uh, light trucks now because they're going to be in for a long, long night. Could be a couple days out here trying to figure things out. That seems like a lot of shell casings. And again, the video plays a big role here. You have detectives out right now trying to get, you know, garner as much evidence as they can to figure this thing out. And social media as well. You're going to hear things on social media about this shooting that you have to glean as well. It's important. They're in for a, a couple of days of hard work here. There's no question. At least five people shot, we're hearing, possibly more. You know, they have to be talked to whenever they become available to speak to. Again, people with them. You want as much information as possible. These are very challenging because everybody's dressed the same and you're trying to figure out, you know, figure out who your shooter or what, what created this, what was the motive here. Did it happen prior and then it just blew out at the end of, at the, end of the uh, parade? Possibly. So a lot of things going on here. It's early on. They have a long night in front of them figuring this thing out. A, a long night. On, and just uh, for the historical nature of it, the six years ago today, was the shooting at Parkland High School, uh, where a 19-year-old opened fire on students and staff at Marjory Stoneman Douglas High School there. Uh, of course, given the nature of our lives in, in the 21st century in the United States, any day is likely to be an anniversary of some kind of gun violence. Let's, let's go, and uh, we have some more sound from witnesses on the scene. Let's hear what we have. Yo. Yo, no, something happened, definitely. A hundred percent. This has been over 30 cop cars. Clearly somebody with a bird's eye view of what went down, but what you've been seeing uh, is the shooting that has taken place down there after the Kansas City Chiefs uh, were having a parade. The players were there. Patrick Mahomes was there right in the middle of it, holding up his Super Bowl trophy. There was a stage set up where they had music. Uh, it was crowded, thousands and thousands of people out on the streets. You're looking at live pictures now of Union Station, where apparently a shooting did break out. Two people have now been de detained. According to our affiliate, uh, ABC affiliate there in Kansas City, KMBC, they are reporting that after those shots were fired, that fire 
five people had been taken to Truman Medical Center. Also, our affiliate reporting that three ambulances were seen going to Children's Mercy Hospital in the emergency room there. We did have shots of some of the scenes that have been uh, taped off now. Clearly, the investigation in full force still do not have a motive. We still do not know who those two individuals are that have been detained, but we do know that they were armed and police took them away immediately. We are losing our helicopter shot there going now to the ground. This is the beauty of television. We have affiliates there covering this, all types of different kinds of crews. So we sort of tend to uh, monitor all the various live shots and uh, and, and dip in uh, as, as we uh, are getting these live pictures in now we're being told one person reported dead and nine injured so now what was supposed to be a celebration regarding the Super Bowl champs the Kansas City Chiefs and a massive parade that's been going on throughout the day it has ended with one person reported dead now and nine injured after gunch now we're being told 10 injured 10 people injured, one person reported dead after shots were fired, two people now detained as this Kansas City Chiefs Super Bowl celebration there on the streets of Kansas City has now turned deadly. Turned into a tragedy. That, that report from the Kansas City, Kansas City Fire Department going to special events. David Muir will take over the cover. This is an ABC News special report. Now reporting, David Muir. Good afternoon. We're coming on the air as local news begins in much of the east and across the country at this hour. We do have new reporting on this shooting at the end of the Kansas City Chiefs Super Bowl victory celebration this afternoon. A crowd of about one million people had turned out for the event. The shots were fired west of Union Station near the parking garage as the rally was ending. Initial reports had come in that multiple people had been shot. We have just learned a Kansas City fire official now saying eight to ten people involved. Unclear for a time if those people were actually shot or the extent of their injuries, but I want to bring in our senior investigative reporter, Aaron Katursky, because Aaron, we're learning preliminary reports now that this is even more serious from the Kansas City Fire Department. It could well be, and police had said initially, David, that multiple people were shot and they had taken two armed people into custody for questioning as part of the investigation. We're learning from Kansas City Fire now, and this is preliminary information and subject to change. But Kansas City Fire is telling ABC News one person is dead, nine others are injured for a total of 10 people uh, that apparently have been shot. We're still assessing whether all of them were shot or whether they were injured in some other way. But one dead, nine injured, and among the, the injured, uh, five are said to be uh, serious injuries and three critical. And again, that information just coming in from Kansas City Fire? From Kansas City Fire and its preliminary information as we lear work to learn more. But Kansas City Police had been on scene in force for this victory parade for the Kansas City Chiefs as they celebrated their Super Bowl. They were on scene and were able to take two armed people into custody very quickly right after these uh, shots were fired near Union Station, the historic century-old train station in Kansas City. Uh, and now, according to Kansas City Fire, preliminarily, uh, one person dead, nine others injured. And of course, uh, far too soon to say whether this was at all connected to the celebration itself or whether this was other activity among other people at the tail end of this. That's right. One of the key questions will be, was this somehow uh, due to an agenda, a political or social agenda, or was this the result of some kind of criminal activity, and that may be where police are leaning at this point, but they haven't said for sure. But David, how many times in advance of big mass gatherings like this have you and I talked about what the Department of Homeland Security and the FBI has said that given the environment in the country right now, the potential for something uh, has always been there, but police in Kansas City have not said why these shots were fired just yet. Stick with us here. Our investigative reporter, Aaron Katursky, the moment you have more there, Aaron, just flag me here. In the meantime, uh, you could actually hear the gunfire, see the crowd suddenly rushing for safety uh, during this uh, moment of gunfire. You're going to see images now from our ABC affiliate, KNBC. Take a look.
could hear the gnat sound there uh, of the gunfire as it was erupting, uh, the crowd uh, moving to get out of the area. The Kansas City Chiefs were actually being escorted off the stage when those shots were fired. Uh, people obviously had already begun to head home. Police say several victims again struck. Uh, initial reports, 8 to 10 injured, and as Aaron Katursky just reported, a preliminary report coming in from Kansas City Fire that uh, up to one person uh, could be dead from this. And of course, uh, these are early details coming in from the fire department. We will have much more as the afternoon progresses here. Authorities say two people have been taken into custody. Both were armed. I want to bring in Alex Perez, who was on the scene to report on the parade itself, the welcome home party for the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, and now, of course, this. Alex, can you describe the scene for us? Well, David, it started as a joyous celebration and ended in tragedy. There were literally thousands of people in this field behind me here. Those three arches you can see there uh, over my shoulder, that's Union Station. The stage was set up right in front of Union Station. The players were addressing the crowd from that stage. The event, the rally, had just ended. It was wrapping up. The players were starting to make their way off of the stage, and that's when that gunfire erupted. And, David, as you might imagine, when there are thousands of people in a crowd close together and they hear gunfire immediately there's panic and there's chaos and there were hundreds of people that we saw running out of the area trying to get somewhere safe uh, we understand from the Kansas City Police Department this is still an active situation they're trying to figure out uh, what exactly unfolded here just a few seconds ago David we saw what looked like uh, a SWAT team sort of run into the garage uh, building that is behind Union Station here. Uh, so authorities are, are still working to figure out what exactly happened here. Now, when that gunfire erupted, when the crowd began to rush out of the area, we immediately began to hear sirens. We heard ambulance sirens. We heard police, uh, law enforcement sirens. And those officers, those members of law enforcement began to immediately flood the area. David, we know uh, from the mayor here that there were already 600 police officers deployed to the parade route and to watch the area. They were working with 24 different law enforcement agencies and of course their federal partners as well to make sure that this was a safe event and it appeared to be safe up until the very end and as we know now David as Aaron reported there uh, at least one dead and eight to ten injured here on the scene David and while the crowd has dispersed still a number of police officers uh, remain on the scene uh, trying to assess what's going on and we even still see some ambulances here on the scene David of course we uh, again uh, I can't underscore enough that those preliminary details coming in from Kansas City fire at this point involving the number of people uh, potentially shot here Alex Perez describing the scene for us, Alex, our thanks to you. Uh, we're told at this hour that a White House official telling ABC News they are closely monitoring the shooting, of course, uh, at the end of the Super Bowl parade. Federal law enforcement officials are on the scene to aid local officials there, something uh, that Aaron had told us earlier and, in fact, likely in place just because of the size and scope of this event. Uh, you can see the pictures there of the crowd. These were the pictures coming in from KNBC, our ABC station, uh, moments after the gunfire. You can see the sheer size of the crowd that had gathered uh, for the Super Bowl champs. I want to bring in uh, one last person here before we turn you over to your local news here in the east and then the rest of the country. Of course, we'll have more uh, coming up here on World News Tonight. Pierre Thomas is our chief justice correspondent. Pierre, what are you learning from federal sources at this hour? Well, I spoke to a key federal source, David, who said there is no information so far coming from the scene suggesting terrorism or some kind of pol uh, political act that it may again may early in the investigation appear to be something criminal David uh, typically in a situation like this you'll have law enforcement at the federal level get a quick sense if there's anything suggesting terrorism or some kind of political event uh, obviously the source said they're just very concerned that guns are so ubiquitous so anytime you have a crowd that loud uh, large and loud you could have a situation like this, David. Uh, the Justice Department, the White House, uh, ATF, other agencies trying to get information from the scene because they need to make sure that this was a contained event. Obviously, very concerned either way, David. Pierre Thomas, our thanks to you again. Multiple people shot at the tail end of the Super Bowl victory celebration in Kansas City. The Kansas City Chiefs were just being escorted off the stage. This was uh, west of Union Station near a parking garage there. Unclear if it was connected in any way to the celebration, the rally itself. But obviously, uh, federal and local authorities uh, were concerned given the sheer size of this crowd that had gathered uh, and the security threat uh, in this country, the heightened uh, temperature, if you will, across this nation. Our team is going to continue to work 
work this. I know for many of you, your local news teams are standing by. Our coverage will continue. ABC News Live, abcnews.com, and I'll be back with the entire team for World News Tonight just a short time from now. I'm David Muir in New York. We'll see you then. Good day. This has been a special report from ABC News. David, thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Kira Phillips. And I'm Terry Moran. And we continue to follow that breaking news at this hour. One person is dead and nine others injured after a shooting at the Super Bowl victory parade in Kansas City. Authorities say at least two armed people have been detained. It was a day of celebration, an all-American day. Tens of thousands of people gathered at this event and then chaos. Take a listen now to the moments shots rang out. You can see that people were swarming just after they heard those gunshot gunshots. Witnesses describing what happened just moments after the shooting. Listen. All of a sudden, people started crushing forward. Everybody started running. There was screaming. We didn't know what was happening, but this day and age when people run, you run. And so I put my arms around her and we tried to push through so people wouldn't run on top of us. And there was a woman crying, saying something about somebody had been shot. Let's bring in our ABC News contributor and former chief of detectives for the NYPD, Bob Boyce, also our contributor here at ABC and former FBI agent Brad Garrett. Um, so still, uh, Bob, I'll start with you. Uh, we're not sure of a motive uh, in any way, shape or form at this point. We just know that there have been two individuals that have been detained uh, and that uh, we can confirm one person has died, five people in serious condition, three in critical, one non-life threatening, uh, and that it's still a fluid situation and that there is a re reunification area that's been set up right there inside Union Station where parents uh, can come and connect with their kids who might have been there at the parade. Um, but j we also were listening uh, to, to the coverage there and, and reading up at what our affiliates are reporting. Bob, did you, did you hear this as well, that the players were actually up on that stage, not far where that shooting uh, took place? Because we did see a number of buses uh, taking off from the scene, going across a, a bridge there. Do you think this uh, shooting might have happened while the players uh, were actually still at the rally? You're right. I, well, from what I heard, they were leaving the platforms at that point at when this when this broke out. So the event was closing, and people were moving out. The players were leaving. I'm sure they're enjoying the euphoric feeling of the of the incident. Uh, this is what I said earlier that this post strategy on people leaving the event is so important, and then so you really have to double down on your uh, on your transportation hubs in the area. Uh, I'm not familiar with the with the main station there, but that could be headed towards that. It's unclear what broke out. It's going to be quite a while before we determine the motive. Those persons arrested could help a lot out with telling us what happened, what they saw. When police officers go into a scene like that, they freeze the entire area. That's probably how they made the two arrests, and it was a key point. Uh, a lot, a lot of courage walking in when people are uh, running one way, and you're running the other. So that's important to understand. They have two arrests. They have another person in custody. We'll see what those arrests bring us. All right, Bob Boyce, thank you very much. Uh, so once again, we are following this developing story. Let me go to Brad Garrett on this. And, and Brad, right now, uh, the police have two armed men in custody. There have been no uh, successive succeeding episodes, no, one, no other shots as far as we know. So what are they trying to do right now at the scene and beyond? determine exactly what happened. What's going to be important, Terry, is as they have, I assume, some video perhaps of this location or at least the proximity of this shooting, did the two shooters walk together? Did they come from outside Union Station, maybe from the main event? Were they following anybody? Now, granted, this is going to be difficult to sort of assess initially. But behaviorally, you need to know kind of what are the dynamics here? Is it one shooter against another shooter? Is it two shooters shooting at a, a, a crowd of people or a group of people that they targeted for whatever reason? I mean, all of that combined with, as Bob mentioned, are these two people detained giving you information as to what was going on here and why were they there? 
And you can clearly do background, quick backgrounds on them. You'll get other agencies involved like the FBI, ATF, et cetera, to see if, if there's anything in their backgrounds that would suggest motive, like drugs, like terrorism, whatever it might be. Doesn't look like it would be terrorism driven. We just don't know enough yet. But let's just see, because that's a lot of people shot if it's just two people getting into it with each other. It's, there's something more here to this picture, obviously, than we know at this moment. Well, and as we heard from our investigative correspondent, Aaron Katursky, it sort of seems like uh, it may be leaning that way more toward uh, an argument, uh, a dispute among uh, individuals there at the parade versus any kind of terrorist activity. Uh, there are uh, clearly pictures, videos starting to come out uh, online in particular through our ABC affiliate as well, uh, where you see police talking to individuals, some in handcuffs, some on the ground. Um, we do know that two individuals have been detained and um, hopefully we will know soon what exactly uh, went down. Uh, Josh, who did you say we had? I'm sorry. Yeah. Pierre Thomas, uh, our chief justice correspondent, joining us now. Pierre, are you able to work through your sources? Any more details of what we might know about who these indiv individuals are that have been detained, a motive, and, and what went down when these shots uh, rang out? Well, the most useful information we have is from actually from the Kansas City uh, Fire and Rescue Department, where they've given the information on those who have been injured. Um, federal law enforcement is trying to get additional detail uh, from the scene uh, about those two men who have been detained as they try to ascertain motive. I, what I can tell you from a senior law enforcement official I spoke to is that he's not seen anything come across his desk yet that indicates or points to any kind of terrorism or politically motivated event. It's early in the investigation, but typically that's the first kind of thing that is shot out to the, to the federal uh, government and to the federal law enforcement officials. Uh, they will, when it's a local criminal sort of event, it takes a little bit more time for information to make its way through the food chain, if you will. But right now, uh, law enforcement is obviously concerned that you had so many people and apparently multiple people armed with weapons firing away. Uh, that is the, that's the issue. That's the challenge. And, you know, this, the country has been on a general, very heightened state of alert, uh, at least from the federal law enforcement perspective, because of what's been happening in Israel with Hamas. Uh, they've been warning over and over again that the nation is in an elevated threat environment similar to what we faced right before 9-11. And so that is in everyone's mind. That said, they don't have anything indicating anything like that, like that at this point. And the key is for them to offer assistance, get engaged with the local police about these suspects, and then fan out any information that's relevant if it's something more than a local criminal event. Absolutely. Pierre, thank you for that. Uh, and you can see there, uh, police officers, this is still an active scene, uh, taking positions, high positions on top of buildings uh, to try to make sure that nothing else happens. Uh, and I want to go to uh, Elizabeth Newman, former official in the Department of Homeland Security, about this event. There were 800,000 people is the estimated crowd size there. We have some pictures I want to show you right now of players on the Kansas City Chiefs being escorted out of what became... Uh, a, a scene of panic when gunfire rang out at the celebration of their Super Bowl, a back-to-back -back Super Bowl, and the players, I am told, we have some pictures, I guess, in those vehicles. Uh, we had... Is this tape or live pictures here? It, Did we, we have that We probably shouldn't show live pictures of the snipers, guys. It gives away the location of police. If there's other shooters out there, I would get off that shot. You don't want to give away where law enforcement is. It puts them in danger. I would get off this shot, guys. Right, I would good. not show snipers. Help me uh, out, Bob, please. Well, so what we or have... Or Brad. Uh, I got it. What we, have, what we have right now also is a tweet from Patrick Mahomes, uh, MVP of the Super Bowl, uh, saying simply praying for Kansas City, as we all are uh, right now. And uh, I wanted to go to Elizabeth Newman on... You know, you have this enormous event, Elizabeth, and try to protect it, try to let people have fun, try to let... Patrick Mahomes and his family and all the families of the fans of that team coming to try to enjoy the day and this happens. Uh, talk to us about how, how uh, law enforcement is trying to secure these events and obviously 
you know, that, that nothing is foolproof. You know, mass gatherings have been the primary target that is most vulnerable um, and most concerning from a security standpoint. You look at what we were doing at the Super Bowl um, just a few days ago. Uh, the preparations for that, the security preparations for that started 18 months ago. There are multiple agencies involved, dozens of agencies involved at the federal, state, and local level to make that event go off safely. When you have side events that lead up to that massive event of the Super Bowl and the events after it, like the parade, those are actually also uh, very concerning targets of opportunity, but even harder to secure because you don't actually have the time to prepare. You don't get 18 months and you also don't get the same amount of federal resources to be able to secure an event. So it, it is always um, maybe not uh, obvious to the general public, but to the security community, we are more concerned about those side events because they just don't have as much time for preparation and we don't have as many resources to put towards securing it. It, it does sound like this might be more of a criminal uh, situation as opposed to um, a targeted attack. Uh, we still don't fully know. Um, nevertheless, the fact that you had individuals with guns in a mass crowd is very, very concerning. Um, and we need to do better. We need to do better to make sure that individuals aren't able to infiltrate um, such a large gathering. You said 800,000 people. Um, that's a lot of people. And and we we actually don't know yet the, the nature of some of the injuries, whether um, some of the injuries are actually gunshot wounds versus just um, uh, trampling effects um, in other situations where we've had mass panic due to a shooting or or other types of tragic events. Um, it is often the, the panic that leads to more injuries than the shooting. Um, so there's a lot of information we don't have yet. Um, certainly very tragic and and certainly um, it just it, it kind of shines the spotlight. Anytime you do these mass gatherings and you don't have a lot of prep time, um, they are more vulnerable and and unfortunately tragic events like this continue to happen in our country. And we, these are live pictures that we're following now, but just uh, and you can see the stage there uh, where the, the party w was taking place along with all the fans there on the streets. But I don't know if we can roll that video again where you actually yeah, here it is right here. So the players were up there on the stage. You see the confetti going. The crowd is excited. But you'll see in a moment how the players, the police actually taking the players off the stage. They didn't even realize what had happened because the music was playing. They were dancing. Hey, they're partying. They're excited. They the Super Bowl, those shots rang out and police immediately came to the stage, got the players off of the stage, and it's very possible that the numerous buses that we saw crossing over uh, the bridge were the players leaving the scene. Um, but the shots rang out and uh, the players here did get off the stage, and then uh, it, it, it took a while for them to be fully informed about what was going on, but Patrick Mahomes did put out a tweet uh, just uh, moments ago simply with his praying hands uh, saying praying for Kansas City. So I'm sure we're going to start to get more response, yes, Terry. As did his, his teammate Drew Tranquil, uh, well, a linebacker on the Kansas City Chiefs, put out uh, his own statement. He said, please join me in prayer for all the victims in this heinous act. Pray that doctors and first responders would have steady hands and that all would experience full healing. These are young men at, at the peak of their athletic ability and, and dedication to this, to this very uh, huge sport, and here they are now wrestling with what to say after a mass shooting so familiar in so many aspects of American life now strikes their sport, their celebration, their day. One person confirmed dead, five in serious condition, three in critical, one non-life-threatening. Our affiliate reporting seeing those ambulances headed to the Children's uh, Hospital. This uh, is this uh, is this tape or live picture right here? Okay, this is one of the the victims uh, that was treated and now being moved uh, or was being moved to an ambulance. This is recorded from earlier. Thank you so much there on the streets of Kansas City, Missouri. Our investigative correspondent, Eric Kintersky, as we watch these pictures from early on, not long after that shooting took place, seeing one victim there being put into the ambulance uh, and taken to the hospital. Uh, this was another uh, scene from earlier where one of the, the victims was being worked
worked on. It could possibly be the same person. Uh, we do know clearly that one person has died and uh, five, six, nine others uh, experienced uh, injuries. Five of those serious, three critical. Don't know if this is another one, an additional victim or the same one we just saw being led into the ambulance. But our investigative correspondent, Aaron Kudersky, joins us now. Aaron, uh, I'd like to follow up on um, what Elizabeth said, that more than likely this looks criminal versus targeted. Of course, we have seen videos, pictures of people there out on the scene. You can imagine social media uh, is running wild with images there from uh, where the shooting took place, where we do see a couple people that were handcuffed, uh, surrounded by police. Um, any word on those that were detained taken in for questioning, uh, any information about a possible motive, uh, what do you assess uh, of the situation so far? At least two people were taken into custody, according to the Kansas City Police Department, and they were armed, handguns recovered, uh, according to law enforcement sources. So uh, right now, w what police are trying to do is establish, perhaps from the people they took into custody, what the motive may have been. There was no immediate indication uh, of any kind of terrorism or political or social motive, Kira, but uh, the authorities will certainly work to see what this was, maybe a criminal element, maybe a dispute, uh, we're not sure, uh, but the presence of guns in a crowd of nearly a million people is concerning, although cannot be surprising in a nation with more than 400 million guns in circulation. I think it would be more surprising if there weren't guns uh, among people in that crowd as they were celebrating the, the victory, uh, the Super Bowl victory of the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, we've heard that the Kansas City Police Department is going to retain the, the lead investigative agency in this, in this case. So that does give us a sense that there may not be a, a terrorism type motive or connection here if the local police and not say the FBI are, are going to be uh, keeping control of this. Yes. Kate, all right, Aaron Katursky, thank you. That, that, is a, that is a good point. Had there been early indications that this was a targeted attack by foreign actors or some kind of coordinated uh, attack on the event, the, the federal government, which stands by to assist, as you point out, might have taken the lead role, but right now that remains with the Kansas City Police Department. And let's go local now to our affiliate, KMBC, who's been just obviously covering this. They were covering the celebration and instantly switched into covering this shooting. Let's go to KMBC's coverage right now. We've been moved to this location. You can see this crime scene tape that's behind us. I mean, this goes all the way down and around Union Station. Um, you know, we the, the Chiefs players and staff members and family members were inside Union Station for quite a long time. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, it was, it was very uh, disturbing to see law enforcement keep continue to run inside Union Station when, you know, we knew that right. there were a lot of people in there. But they have since been loaded on the buses and have, have moved and, and are back to where they came from. And this all started right when the rally ended. I mean, it yep. couldn't have been a split no. second later when the rally ended, when the first gunshots were first heard, uh, just again or into yep. this this area, which yep. is just the west, uh, in the front west lawn in front of Union Station, is where the first gunshots, and that's where police officers were kind of rushing to the scene. And then we heard other gunshots. It was unclear to where we heard that was happening, but we saw a chaos like we saw fans not knowing where they were going to go they, they were they were stuck hundreds of thousands of fans here in front of the Union Station people who knew that something was wrong were stuck they couldn't go anywhere right. because some fans were leaving one way other fans were leaving another way not knowing so it, it, it was a frightening situation yes, it was. for all the people who were here who knew that something wrong was happening you know Kelly Eckerman was speaking to a couple of the people and you kind of sense or, or you 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 felt the fear that they were feeling yeah. and and the entire tone of the front of Union Station just 
changed immediately from something that was a, a, a celebration um, on stage all morning long. It just had been, you know, no incidents. It just a celebration of hundreds of thousands of, of Chiefs fans um, really just enjoying the, the beautiful weather on this Valentine's Day. And the tone couldn't have changed quicker. Um, and I think what was startling from our vantage point is we knew something horrific had happened, but we knew that so many people had not. So they're going about their business, you know, just kind of enjoying the day. And they have yet to, to realize what's going on because law enforcement acted very swiftly uh, moving into the situation. And I should mention, you know, there are no metal detectors. Uh, you can't have metal detectors getting all these people in here. So, you know, it's a situation that is heavily secure in terms of having many layers of law enforcement doing their job and trying to protect people. But there's no stopping anyone from bringing weapons in here, unfortunately. And we're going to hear more from the Kansas City Police Department as far as how everything uh, uh, was controlled after the first gunshots and the second gunshots or how many more gunshots were heard. Uh, we'll get more information from there. But one of the things that we also witnessed was even though there was chaos, even though there was so many people here witnessing the parade, the Kansas City Police Department were able to kind of clear out the perimeter, which is there's a big giant fountain inside or outside Union Station. So they were able to rope that off and their perimeter kind of kept expanding and expanding until it eventually got to us where we had to leave the area. But all the way up the hill, up to where the Liberty Hill Memorial is, they were able to clear out all the fans. So they were out probably faster than one could expect exactly. to try to get hundreds of thousands of fans to safety. And, and to see, move them off the perimeter. The other thing that is just, I, I can't get out of my mind and my heart at this point is the fact that, you know, because it's such a beautiful day and because practically all of the major school districts had called this a red yeah. snow day, there were a, a ton of kids here, little, little kids, um, kids of all ages with their families families, with their friends, you know, we watched these little kids tumble and play football in front of us all morning long. And to think that, you know, really just not so many feet from where they were, um, the first gunshots went off. So the fact that there have been um, patients taken to Children's Mercy is something that, you know, it is going to weigh heavily on people's minds um, just because it, the, there were just so many families here. And it was difficult to see so many people still celebrating the moment yeah. of the team and in that same crowd the look of horror yeah. on people's faces together just because what they were seeing and what other people right. weren't seeing and we saw that and you don't get that out of your mind because you nope. want to say you want to say there's something that's right. happening right. and you just couldn't and and that's where your hats off to the to the police department yeah because you hate to imagine it's already a horrible horrific scene but you hate to imagine what would have happened if 300 400,000 people how many people were here knew what was happening that's right. I mean, it, because it, it, right. And, and to be honest, you know, because it happened at the very end, it didn't happen in the middle. You know, people were, their minds were, we're going to head toward our, our cars. You know, we're going to head up. So there were, you know, for most people, especially up on the hill and everything, they were heading to their cars and they were going to find out about this later on. And, and I, I am grateful for that because we knew we were going to have to explain exactly what had happened to all these people. And it, and it taints the, the entire day and what we were originally here to celebrate celebrate um, in our fine city. We have another ambulance who's, who's making way. I we may have to kind to of move, uh, move over a little bit. But again, it's still very much uh, not as active, but there is still a heavy police presence. Um, there are still ambulances on the scene. Another ambulance is arriving here. Um, and I know that momentarily we're going to hear from the Kansas City Police Department and, um, and get more details on the situation here. Let me... Todd, right behind you, an ambulance is coming. So, yeah, I mean, that that is the situation. And, and Bria and Chris, I know you're, our newsroom is working, you know, tirelessly to try and get updated information so we can let people know um, 
you know, the, the absolute latest as to who is in custody and, um, you know, the people who who are being treated. Um, we know that one person has died in all of this. Oh, okay, let's go to Matt Evans, who is now on the scene. Matt, what can you tell us? Big time. That's what we've seen here uh, right now. Obviously, we've been here for um, it seems like a couple hours at this point, where police were kind of beating everybody out from uh, from Pershing, from Union Station itself. We talked to a lot of people as they were walking out, um, who told us that they heard uh, several gunshots. They weren't sure if they were fireworks or gunshots. There were also some fireworks in the area going off, so it was pretty confusing for everybody at the time. And then people started running. They heard more of people eventually trying to get out. Talked to one family who was barricaded inside of Union Station for about 30 minutes. They heard gunshots and just started running over barricades to get to some kind of safety. Um, obviously, we're not getting much information from police at this location. We're told there is a media state there, just a little bit further up Pershing here. But this is as far as we've been allowed to go this entire time. Uh, we've seen a lot of uh, Kansas City, Missouri police officers, Jackson County Sheriff's deputies with long guns. There was one point where there was some concern about the IRS building across from Union Station as well. We were pushed back. We saw uh, tactical units getting into the IRS building too. Uh, so not sure if that was really anything or not, but there was not much, uh, not much that came out of that building. So that was uh, at least uh, some good news. A lot of people that were still kind of ducking for cover in that moment. But uh, obviously the, 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 the mood that we've heard from everybody here has just uh, absolutely shifted from one of, of jubilation, of, of just uh, excitement about the Kansas City Chiefs to just uh, sheer terror. And um, this is something that obviously Kansas City Police trained for. They have been um, in this worst case scenario for them, obviously. You're hoping that this never happens, but uh, their officers responded very quickly. Um, it was pretty evident that something was wrong. We were not at the rally at the time of the shooting. We were a few blocks away, but it was pretty evident that something was going on because the police helicopter began uh, doing some really tight circles over the crowd. You hear the sirens, and, um, and obviously we're now just trying to figure out exactly what happened with all of this. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's tough to, to put into words exactly what people here in Kansas City are feeling after this. Um, it's obviously we know that this is going to be a uh, an investigation that will be very thorough into what happened, into who was involved, into all of the things surrounding this and leading up to that shooting. And, um, of course, this is something that we'll need to learn more from police and city leaders. In the coming hours, the coming days, weeks, and, and, and maybe even the coming months. Um, uh, Jackson Kurtz is here with us, too. Um, he was at uh, at the parade site. I'd like to, I'd like to bring him in, too. Uh, we're on the same uh, live view. But Jackson, uh, I'm just going to hand the mic off to you and, and just to Walk us through what you saw when all this happened. Thank you, Matt. We were leaving uh, the Union Station area when this was going on, um, and we saw about six or seven police cars zoom right past us and about four or five ambulances as well. Uh, notable that a couple of these were completely uh, not anywhere close to Kansas City. Um, some places in Kansas, some places in Missouri all responding. And as we walked up to where we are right now on Broadway and Pershing, we saw a about uh, eight or ten um, long gunmen of Jackson County Sheriff's Department uh, running towards um, the federal building here. I'm not sure what that was exactly, if that was related to it, if they were apprehending more people, um, but definitely uh, something that we were watching. We saw another man get put into a police vehicle, uh, unsure if he was just uh, unrelated to the shooting, but uh, most of these people here uh, terrified of what happened. Lots of people still walking back uh, towards where we are away from Union Station. I could only assume that they were inside or nearby uh, this shooting. So many people telling Matt and I about how scary, scared they were. Uh, one video that a viewer sent us that showed us this happened almost immediately after the music stopped after the rally at Union Station. Uh, it's like a 15 second window. The music stops playing. People are celebrating. They, they're singing Red Kingdom, uh, another chief song, and then immediately you start seeing a, a video of the shaking and people scared trying to figure out what was going on running inside of Union Station. Um, so 
We're still waiting to get more uh, of an update from Kansas City Police. Still waiting to get an update on those people who are critically injured, any more people that are injured, and just how many people uh, are hurt tonight uh, from this shooting. Completely different change of tone of what we saw this morning of celebration in Kansas City turning into just pure uh, uh, fear uh, here. Not what you wanted, but... Whenever you go anywhere uh, these days, it's something that we all have in the back of our mind that this could happen anywhere. Um, and unfortunately happened on one of the most uh, celebratory days in Kansas City. So still lots of uh, police here on the scene, lots of Jackson County Sheriff's Departments. Um, I saw Belt and, and ambul ambulance from Belton drive past a couple uh, minutes ago, but um, still see say, ambulances down by Union Station. I don't know if there's uh, people being taken in and out, but still plenty of police here on scene. Lots of folks still wondering what's happening. But uh, about two hours ago is when really the flood of people started to leave. So still some people who were inside coming this way off Pershing and Broadway. Um, still just a scene we're monitoring. I'm going to give it back to Matt here uh, to wrap up uh, this this update here right now and see what else we know, Matt. Yeah, and Jackson, just something you mentioned too. Uh, a lot of people probably weren't even aware of this situation as they were leaving the rally. We saw some people who clearly knew what had happened, and then others who were still trying to celebrate, still trying to, um, still trying to to enjoy a party that uh, clearly that this it's not party anymore. This is now a crime scene investigation and um, that's what we're seeing kind of behind us here where you see this white tape up um, on the east side or the on, on the west side of Union Station that is. So exactly where this shooting happened, we're not sure. We've kind of been on the outside. Obviously cell service has been very spotty uh, through this entire ordeal but um, we're still seeing a lot of police kind of meet at, at this side. We saw at least five or six ambulances leave from, from this side and, and several more before we were able to get this close that we're leaving with lights and sirens on as well. So, um, I mean, obviously, we there's a lot of questions that a lot of people have. Um, but at, at this point, there's not much information we have have here, um, obviously. So um, it's kind of maybe when investigators get in and start really taking account of all those things. Um, obviously, we'll stay here and keep keep talking to people, keep trying to, to get information. But um, for now, we're going to we'll try to send it back to you guys. Um, and of course, this just—it's um, really—it's really—it's really tough, obviously, to yep. to see what has happened here. And and um, know what you mean, buddy. And yeah, I mean, kind of a loss for words, honestly. I know. So yeah, I know a lot of people. We are all right are. Now. It's and, truly uh, devastating. And we're we're the very same. So, all right, Matt. Thanks. Uh, we'll uh, we, go ahead and send it back to you. Yeah, we are awaiting uh, an announcement uh, and an update from the mayor and the chief of police that uh, we now think is, is happening at Union Station rather than Kansas City, Missouri Police Headquarters as we were initially led to believe. A couple of things real quick. University Health Truman Medical Center now reporting they are treating four gunshot victims and eight other individuals who were not shot in all of this. So they are treating 12 people right now. So that earlier number of casualties has already gone up. Again, TMC treating four gunshot victims and eight other people who were uh, who were not shot in this? Let's go to Matt Fleener, who was at, at TMC. TMC. For his, perhaps he uh, he's uh, getting the same information we are. And again, there's a bit of a lag uh, because of cell service. Cell service. The, the, there's going to be a few moments between Delay. when I stop and when he starts talking. Matt. lag or not, we're here to report uh, the in latest information. And as of right now, we have seen things calm down just a bit, even though there are staff from University Health Truman Medical Center that are still standing back here and, and just milling about. We've seen police tape that is up, and we also know that families are inside. Families of these multiple victims are inside right now in the chapel, hearing from staff, presumably hearing from chaplains and, and medical staff trying to figure out the latest on their loved ones who are inside. We did get an earlier statement from University Health uh, spokeswoman who, who said uh, University Health, the level one trauma center, of course, uh, those victims brought here from the Union Station incident are being treated by the best trauma specialists in the city. Our entire staff is aware of the incident and all of our hearts go out to the victims and their families. And, and we know the staff here at, at University Health Truman Medical Center are some of the best trauma specialists in this city and, and they deal with shootings here in the city day in, day out. So they, 
they know how uh, to handle situations uh, and shootings. It, it, it probably has been quite some time, though, before they've had to deal with uh, the shootings of this magnitude. And, and we know, uh, as we've been counting, there are 12 victims from this, uh, from this incident that are inside right now. And of course, we know four gunshot victims, eight other individuals who were not shot in this whole incident today. We did speak with a woman earlier uh, who was on the phone. She was frantically trying to find out some information. And I asked her, hey, who do you know that, that was down there? And she said it was her brother. And she said that her brother was shot in the face. And she was frantically trying to figure out how he was doing. We talked with another a gentleman who said he was not at the rally, but he heard that his, uh, his sister had been shot. And so he was down here trying to seek information. And, and those families have been taken away now. They've been, uh, they've been uh, working with staff and trying to figure out the latest on how their family members are doing. But uh, uh, it's just been a really, really difficult day uh, here in Kansas City. And a lot of people are, are just trying to figure out what to do next and trying to figure out where we go from here. But uh, we know the staff here at Truman Medical Center is working very hard to make sure all of the people that have been brought here are, are taken care of the best possible way. We'll send it back to you. All right, Matt, thanks. Governor Parson uh, also posting on social media a short time ago. Um, the governor and the first lady were there when it happened uh, in front of Union Station. They are safe. They are secure. Uh, state law enforcement personnel assisting local authorities in this uh, response as they wait to learn more. Governor posting our hearts go out to the victims. Um, we, again, are still awaiting um, uh, uh, yeah, Stacy Graves and the mayor a chance to, uh, to get an update on uh, the best information that they have. And I want to bring Lynn and Laura. Uh, maybe press let's, conference. let's go to that press conference okay. right now. Our fire chief, Ross Grendison. After I'm done speaking, Police Chief Graves will give details on the incident that happened. In Kansas City, at Union Station, about today's shooting. We might not have good audio. We got it? Can we take it? Make sure we note at the outset. Uh, first Here thing, we, we had 600 <laughs> Kansas City, Missouri Police Department officers, 250 from outside agencies. We went out today, like everyone in Kansas City, looking to have a celebration. The celebration was marred by a shooting today. And we recognize that there are some who are injured. We are praying for the safety of everyone. I've talked to a few different uh, folks so far. One, we have spoken to the Kansas City Chiefs, who made clear that their prayers are with everyone who was at the parade today, everyone in Kansas City, and everyone who was touched by this incident. They also noted that their players, coaches, and staff are all accounted for at this point and safe. We, however, know that this is a fluid situation, so all that we are sharing now may change as the hours go ahead. We've also received a call from the White House that offered all federal assistance in the investigation. We had federal agencies present today. We appreciate that, and certainly in the days ahead and the hours ahead, we will make sure we continue to do this work. I will say personally, first, a thank you to the women and men of law enforcement, to the women and men who work with the Kansas City Fire Department and our other agencies. When the shooting started, I, like many others, ran and ran for safety. I saw a number of agencies, including the Kansas City Police Department, officers with guns drawn who are running towards danger. We thank them for that. As I was leaving the scene, I saw members of our Kansas City Fire Department administering aid to folks who are seriously injured without concern for the shootings and the challenges that were near them. This is absolutely a tragedy, the likes of which we would have never expected in Kansas City, and the likes of which we will remember for some time. However, I want to say thank you to those who are making sure that we are safe today, those who are investigating this incident, and those who will continue to make sure that those who committed these acts today are brought to justice. We'll come back for some questions at the end of the Chief's comments, but now the Police Chief, Stacy Graves. Chief Stacy Graves, Kansas City, Missouri Police Department. At the conclusion of the Chief's rally today, there were shots fired on the west side of Union Station. Immediately, officers responded to the area, took two people into custody, and also immediately rendered life-sustaining aid to those victims. 
We're still gathering information on the number and the status of victims. But like I said, we know that one of the victims is deceased. We also know that officers ran towards danger. Officers were there to keep everyone safe. I'm angry at what happened today. The people who came to this celebration should expect a safe environment. We had over 800 law enforcement officers, Kansas City and other agencies, at the location to keep everyone safe. Because of bad actors, which were very few, this tragedy occurred, even in the presence of uniformed law enforcement officers, who again ran towards them and took them into custody. To the people who were injured in this tragedy, our hearts go out to you and your families. This investigation is just beginning and we are working safely to clear all surrounding areas and businesses. This is still an active investigation. Uh, we will continue to keep you updated. We will keep you updated on Twitter and most likely a follow-up uh, press availability. Did you have anything? has been declared deceased. We have, we have... Right now, we have up to 10 to 15 injured by... Yes. Right now, we do not have an exact number of people who were victims of a gunshot wound. It could be upwards from 10 to 15 with one deceased. Do you know how many are in critical condition at this point? I do not have conditions on our victims just yet. Any believed to be children? I don't, I do not believe that any of them were children. Any law enforcement injured in this first response? Um, nothing of note. Chief, what prompted, what do you, what, what do you guys believe now prompted the shooting? Uh, we are still, that is still under investigation. Uh, I myself was outside when I heard the shots fired. It is an ongoing investigation. It's going to take us a little bit to determine exactly what led up to the shooting. I will say, though, we do have two suspects in custody. There are questions speculating on social media that some fans may have helped to detain one of those. I have, I have heard that as well. I have heard that, that fans got involved in the apprehension or the pursuit of one of the suspects. I cannot confirm that right now, but that is something that I have heard myself. Can yes. you the response time? Because you see 10 to 15 constantly during the shooting, and there was 800 officers there. This happened pretty quickly. So you talk about when this started, sort of the timeline from there to the point where your officers responded to the point where you had KCFD helping to Absolutely. your first day. As soon as the rally concluded, there were shots fired on the west side of Union Station. Officers were on scene in the area. I know one of the suspects was immediately pursued on foot. Um, like I said, there's two suspects in custody. I have heard uh, the information that was just requested. I will confirm or deny that. Um, but after that, immediately officers began rendering life-sustaining aid, calling in fire, which is the, the fire department, to uh, also assist victims. Do you know if there were more than two people taken into custody? Because we had two people, after you guys had made your announcement, there were two people in custody, two people live on our air being taken, handcuffed, put into vans. So can you tell well, us about that and the process as this investigation continues? I don't know exactly the two that you're talking about that, that your camera caught. Um, on on video being loaded into a wagon. I don't know that, but I can tell you that uh, in and around that scene, it is still active. Um, not active in, in necessarily threats, but it's a very active scene. We're still investigating. This is still early on. Um, we still have parties that are walking into hospitals. Chief Graves, do you know anything about the suspects in terms of where they're from? Are they from Kansas? I do not know that, but that's something that, that I also will be finding out. Two questions. We are hearing upwards of maybe 20 shots. Can you talk about the number that you heard? While you were I'm there? hearing 10 to 15, possibly 15, with, with the one um, that is um, deceased. And do you know anything about the timing? It seems odd that this waited until the very end of the rally. 
I don't have anything about, I, I can't give you an answer on the timing. I can just say that uh, that's when it occurred and we are investigating what led up to that. Maybe once we get some of those details, we'll know why that happened at that time. But right now, it's just, it's still too new. Chief, Chief, is, my Chief is it just one incident or multiple incidents yes. that, that injured most? That is something that, that is under investigation. Mayor Quinton Lucas, you talked about how you were on the ground and you yourself had to run for safety. I understand we're, we're still waiting on a timeline and I'm trying to understand what exactly happened. But we were having a Super Bowl parade and this is what the country is talking about now. What is your message to this city at a time like this? I second the comments by the chief of police. I'm heartbroken. First of all, I'm praying for the victims and the families impacted. I start with them. Um, I'm incredibly upset, disappointed. I was there with my wife. I was there with my mother. Uh, we never would have thought that we, along with Chiefs players, along with fans, hundreds of thousands of people, would be forced to run for our safety today. I think that I'll let the investigation shake out before coming to any further conclusions, but I think the initial response absolutely is anger. You know, we have done a number of these now, and this is a day that a lot of people look forward to, something they remember for a lifetime. And what they shouldn't have to remember is the threat of gun violence, marring a day like this, injuring them and their families. This morning, I was actually thinking about bringing my child, as many people in Kansas City did. And I don't want us to have to, in our country, for every big event, think about a concern of being shot. As the chief noted, we had a lot of law enforcement officers there today. They did exceptional and outstanding work, and I will second that again. Because on your timeline point, I was inside of Union Station. We heard something. A number of us start running, and I see a stream of officers going the exact other direction. In, with guns drawn, ready to address danger. And that was the, the situation throughout. People who responded absolutely immediately. But I wish that we lived in a world where they wouldn't have to do that. I wish we lived in a world where we wouldn't have to see incidents like that. But I'm as heartbroken as anybody. We will do a, a full and thorough investigation. I hope that we bring whoever this is to justice. And we will continue to try to make sure that we can be as safe as possible. However, when you have people who decide to bring guns to events, when you have people who are deciding to try to mar events, celebratory ones like this one, all of us start to become members of this club that none of us want to be a part of, which is those who have experienced mass shootings. I hope for Kansas City this is one of the last times we experienced that. What's that? Sorry, I'm going. In danger at, at any point? Was I in danger? No, were any players. players, the Chiefs players. You know what? I, I think we'll let the investigation take a look at that. The police department responded effectively, I think incredibly quickly, to make sure that people would be out of harm's way. That being said, a number of us had to flee from a situation because we heard a sound of gunshots. So I'll let you answer your own question in terms of whether you think that's something that puts you in danger or not. Um, in my view, anytime shots are nearby, you don't know where they're coming from, you don't know who's firing them and all of that, then perhaps there is a, a situation of danger. This but, is a question for fire. Can I ask a fire question? Of the 10 yeah. to 15 injured, as you say, are all of those gunshots, I want to know, and do you have a sense of how many or are some of those also critical and injured? We, we've covered that we, yeah. we don't have that information. I, I just have a fire answer. question. Hold on. How 10 to 15 is what we have. Potentially 15. One deceased. I don't have a condition on the other gunshot uh, victims. Uh, those are all gunshots. Though. Correct. Okay. So, Correct. We don't know how many. One fire question. No, I do not. Because, okay. because Chief Graves said that we're, we're going to have a lot injured. of updates later, guys. Okay. we got to go inside and gather this information. Okay. I appreciate it. Where are the updates, Jake, later? I just have one thing to say. This is not Kansas City. I'm, I'm angered by, by what happened, but I want you to know that the, the Kansas City, Missouri Police Department and all the law enforcement officers that were there today that were serving and protecting did the best that they could, and I'm so proud of them that they ran into danger getting two people into custody and at the same time rendering life sustaining aid to those victims. We were here for a safe celebration and because of two bad actors or more it is why we're standing here today. We will recover as a city. I, I, my heart goes out to um, our, our victim who is deceased. 
but your police department stands ready and we are, are invested in the safety and betterment of Kansas City. Thank so you. Be you more we'll send you guys more, more updates on Twitter, okay? Follow the Twitter account and we'll right. put the updates that we have on Police Twitter. Police we'll Chief Stacy Graves and Kansas City, Missouri Mayor Quentin Lucas on the steps of police headquarters downtown. And uh, some of the headlines here. Um, police Chief Stacy Graves, I am angry over what happened today. This is not Kansas City. Two or more bad actors. All right, you're hearing the coverage uh, from our affiliate KMCB in uh, Kansas City there of a press conference. Officials, uh, Mayor uh, uh, Quinton. Lucas and Police Chief Stacy Graves of Kansas City, and they are police confirming there that at least one per one person is dead. At least ten others were hurt. Authorities say two people were taken into custody. Two armed people were taken into custody. The police chief there saying officers ran toward the danger, and that more than uh, 800 officers were there to keep everyone safe. Uh, it was a day of celebration, an All-American Day. Tens of thousands of people were gathered. 800,000 is the, is the report gathered at this event, and then chaos. So take a listen right now to the moments at this celebration of the Kansas City Chiefs Super Bowl victory, the moment that shots rang out. All right, so police uh, seen swarming the scene after that. You heard those shots, rapid fire, several shots, uh, and police then swarming the scene, people fleeing. The mayor himself said he, you know, tried to get to safety and then saw police officers uh, who were hundreds of them on the scene, swarming the scene, two armed people taken into custody uh, with the police uh, chief saying that this looks like this was a couple of bad actors, not a targeted attack, but some kind of dispute argument conflict that broke out just as this event was ending. ABC News senior investigative reporter Aaron Katursky uh, and joins us now on this. Aaron, let me just ask you what we know right now uh, about this event based on what we heard in the press conference and, and, and what we've been reporting all day. Terry, as the mayor, Mayor Lucas, said it was a celebration marred by a shooting after the Kansas City Chiefs had paraded through the city and all of those people came to cheer them on after uh, the team won the Super Bowl. Shots rang out on the west side of Union Station, the historic century-old uh, Beaux-Arts train station. Uh, and the gunfire, uh, we understand, has uh, left between 10 and 15 people injured. According to the police chief, one person has died of injuries. There are two suspects in custody. Both of them were armed when they were taken into custody by the police. You heard the chief say there were some 800 law enforcement officials there on scene to protect the parade. They quickly rushed toward the gunfire. They were able to take two people into custody. At this point, we're told the Kansas City Police Department is retaining the investigation. They're the lead agency, and so it's not a federal case at this moment, giving us an indication that they believe this may be more criminal in nature uh, rather than something, say, terror or political or, or some other kind of motive. Uh, Terry, the, uh, the police chief declared herself angry at what happened today. She said people should expect a safe environment. There were 800 law enforcement officers there, and instead, as the mayor put it, the celebration was marred by a shooting. All right, Aaron Katursky, thank you very much for that. Let's bring in uh, Bob Boyce, former chief of detectives at, in the NYPD, uh, who is with us frequently on, this, on these kinds of events and many others as well. So, Bob, I want to ask you, what you, when you listen to Police Chief Stacy Graves of Kansas City and the mayor as well, uh, uh, Quentin Lucas, what did you hear that, that, uh, 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 that struck you in that press conference? Well, I think uh, the, the chief was in a tough spot there. Was, let's frame this correctly. Uh, when we look at this Kansas City, they have one of the highest crime rates in the country. So she has she has a work cut out for her. And when you go with a lot of planning, as you can see the frustration from the chief as well, that she planned this out, multi-agencies coming in, helping out 800 law enforcement from the scene. So it's frustrating when these things happen. The, the flavor I've got from this entire conversation is this is a criminal issue here with the two arrests. It's unclear if those are the perpetrators of the crime. 
But nonetheless, it looks like it may may be. It doesn't look like a federal investigation at this point. As Aaron said, the feds would have come over and taken it over by now. So Kansas City Police is a primary here, and we'll know more as we go forward from these two individuals arrested. Important to note is when you look at these crime scenes, the first thing I do is look at the uh, groupings of shell casings to see how many, see if I can ascertain how many shooters there were that in that in this incident. So that's going on right now. Were they just two shooters? Because it certainly seems that way. Were they shooting at each other and other people got involved? Other people got hit? Uh, innocent people? That's what it looks like to me. So the, from what I took from this press conference is frustration from the chief, understandable, as well it's a criminal incident here, and that's where they're going forward. All right. Bob Boyce, thank you very much for that. Let's bring in Elizabeth Newman, former official at the uh, Department of Homeland Security. And to follow up on what Bob was saying, Elizabeth, on the frustration of Police Chief Stacy Graves there, uh, she said that this was done in the presence of the law enforcement. Uh, that was her report, that this, this was something that happened where law enforcement virtually watching uh, two people, she called them bad actors, uh, who apparently, uh, from what she was describing, took out guns and started firing. I mean, there's all the preparation in the world, as Brad was suggesting, and, and there was enormous preparation for this event. You know, how can you stop that? I mean, that's the trouble that we're facing throughout our society right now. We have individuals who... Um, you know, as a mom, you kind of want to, it's like you're talking to your kids and you guys, you're asking, have you guys lost your mind? Uh, yes, we as a society have seemed to lost, lose our uh, collective minds and we, we bring guns in places that they don't belong and we use violence to solve our problems um, or to express our frustrations. Uh, and, we, and we don't know the details here, we, we are, um, but we certainly can describe the environment that we have been living in for uh, nine or 10 years now, where we are in an epidemic of mass attacks um, that are perpetrated for a variety of reasons, some with very cohesive ideological motives, some with uh, you know, no, no discernible motive whatsoever, and, and some are just spillover violence of uh, individuals who are angry for some reason. And when you're in that, a very difficult threat environment. It is. It is just an impossible scenario for law enforcement. Um, they. They. I thought the police chief did a wonderful job of pointing out how well prepared they were, the number of law enforcement that were on the scene, and that they were running towards the threat. I mean, that's especially after Uvalde, where we did see law enforcement failure. It's important to point out how frequently our law enforcement officers are the ones running towards the threat. They are trying to protect the, the, the public. Um, and yet this keeps happening, and, and it does uh, remind all of us that this is a, a society-wide problem that we can't just rely on law enforcement to fix for us. We need to have some tough conversations. Why do we keep um, ending up with these tragedies? Why um, do we have too many people who believe that violence is the solution to what their problems are? So um, it, it is a tough day in Kansas City and yet another tough day in America. Absolutely. Aaron, Brad, Elizabeth, thank you all very much. An all-American event, an all-American glorious day in Kansas City, and unfortunately, what is an all-American tragedy as well. One dead, 10 to 15 injured, some of them from gunshots, some of them from injuries, perhaps, as the crowd fled the scene. Well, the news never stops here, and we will be right back with continuing coverage on this story. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here.
We are here in Israel, a nation at war. We've seen tank after tank pouring into this area. This is where it all began. Bullet holes all up the wall. Within minutes, the air raid sirens going off. You can hear the sound of an explosion. We are pinned down here. Tonight, Israel waging a fierce bombardment of Gaza. The Israel-Hamas war. For nonstop live coverage, stream ABC News Live. Reporting from southern Israel. From the front lines. In downtown Ramallah. In Beirut. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. ABC News Live. With so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir, America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. First thing in the morning. There's a lot going on. Yet another avalanche warning that's up. To catch you up with what happened overnight. A dangerous ice storm is impacting the morning commute. What's happening today, escalating tensions in the Middle East. What people are talking about, the migrant crisis. Fast, straightforward. With some fun in between. How does billionaire sound? Sounds good to me. The moose started chasing a dog. First thing in the morning. America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. On ABC News Live. I have a point of contact. They're expecting us? This is our secret world we have. Do you think we're going to be safe? I don't know. This is my pen. Inside that pen is a slice of human brain. These are assassinations that people are going to be murdered. Definitely. There's really no telling what some of them will do. I'm in, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. Oh, my God, oh. It's happening everywhere and anywhere. Wow. Right now, there's just so much happening in our world. So much at stake at the start of every morning. Making sense of it all, that's not always so easy. And that's where we come in. Good Morning America. We want you to know, every morning, we're right here, and we got gotcha. you. From America's number one news source comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and it can customize to you and your interests. If you love being in the know, you're gonna love this. Experience what all the buzz is about. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. Reporting on the flooded streets of Treasure Island, I'm Ginger Z. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. I'm Mike Ajachi in Washington. We begin with breaking news. A deadly shooting near the Super Bowl victory parade route in Kansas City, Missouri. Law enforcement officials providing an update moments ago saying one person is dead and at least 10 others injured. The chaos erupting this afternoon at the tail end of the parade where tens of thousands of fans had gathered to celebrate the Chiefs' latest Super Bowl win. Officials saying that the shooting took place near Union Station near the train station's parking garage. Dramatic video capturing the moments the gunfire erupted. Take a listen. Police swarming the scene just after the shots rang out, witnesses describing the chaotic moments. All of a sudden, people started crushing forward. Everybody started running. There was screaming. We didn't know what was happening, but this day and age when people run, you run. And so I put my arms around her and we tried to push through so people wouldn't run on top of us. And there was a woman crying, saying something about somebody had been shot. Police saying two suspects were detained at the scene. ABC News correspondent Alex Perez live in Kansas City covering the latest. Alex, what do we know at this hour? Well, Ike, what started as joy and celebration turned to sadness within seconds here. We've seen the images. There were thousands of people in this field behind me here. Those three arches right over my shoulder, that's Union Station. There was a stage. There is a stage still there right in front of the building. That's where the players were gathered, and the rally was wrapping up here, and it actually just ended. The players were being escorted from the stage, and that's when the chaos began. We made our way uh, to that area over there. I want to point into the distance there, Ike, you can see that ambulance. We spoke to uh, some of the eyewitnesses who were in that area. That's where we believe the west side of the Union Station building near the parking garage. That's where we believe this shooting altercation of some sort happened. What exactly led to that remains under investigation as we speak. But what we do know right now is that at least one person is dead, 10 to 15 are injured, and many, many traumatized who were out here and had to run after all of that happened. Uh, thousands of people 
celebrating when suddenly they heard gunshots. I spoke to one woman who told me she actually jumped on top of her daughter because she didn't know what exactly was going on and she was trying to protect her loved one. You can imagine just how frightening and scary this was for people who had been some out here for hours, entire families uh, celebrating and having a good time. Um, authorities here now trying to figure out what exactly led to this uh, uh, the shooting here on the scene. We heard from the police chief here earlier today, just a short time ago, actually, and the police chief angry, calling uh, the, the two people that they do have in custody at this point bad actors and saying that uh, they, they actually carried out this event, this incident, this shooting right in front of police officers. Ike, the police chief, very upset uh, about that situation. We do know that the city of Kansas City was prepared for this. They had uh, uh, more than 800 or about 800 officers out here to protect the crowd of about a million that was expected to turn out. Uh, about 800,000 people, they believe now, uh, turned out to celebrate uh, the chiefs here. Uh, but at this point, uh, the investigation continues underway, Ike, and just some moments of chaos and fear for thousands of people here who thought they were having a good time when suddenly shots were fired. Now one person is dead, 10 to 15 injured. Ike? Alex, thank you. You heard Alex say that right there. Moments of fear causing people to scatter, jump over barriers, running for their lives. The scene of pandemonium. We're going to be joined now by Lisa Ermacker, who was at the victory celebration when the shooting started. Lisa, what did you see out there? Yeah, well, I had run down the hill because we wanted to collect some confetti for, for, for Christmas ornaments. It's our custom and our tradition. Um, so I was running down the hill and got to the front of the station. I was on the east side. Um, I'm sorry, I was on, yeah, on the east side and the shooting was on the west side. And all of a sudden the police were just yelling, run, run, go, run. Um, and so we started to run. Um, th they had their guns drawn and, and people, there were children and people with strollers, uh, strollers and, and everyone was sort of not understanding what was going on. Um, we knew that they were trying to uh, get the station cleared early so that downtown could accommodate people for Valentine's Day. Um, but then there was this in incredible panic and we, I just ran, ran. You know, Lisa, I got to say, being a Kansas City fan as yourself, obviously, I'm sure you're getting used to going to events like this being their recent success. Is this something you ever thought could happen, coming to a victory parade from a Super Bowl? No, I mean, Kansas City is such an amazing city and we rally behind our sports heroes and they're all such great guys and everyone just feels that they're part of our community and it feels such to be such a celebration and Chiefs fans just get together and it's such a, a thing to rally around in the community. And and so everyone was just so excited that we, we'd won our third Super Bowl in this era. And then just to have this happen is... is you just don't believe it's going to happen in your community when you're there celebrating such an, an amazing accomplishment. Now, you said it yourself there. The moment turned chaotic rather quickly. Uh, outside of yourself, just looking at the scene around you, what were other people like during those chaotic moments? There were people who were not sort of responding at all, who were just, like, going about their business, and then there were other people who were clearly very panicked. Um, and so it was just, but the police were amazing. They obviously had their weapons drawn. So, um, and they were just yelling and yelling and yelling at people to just to clear the scene. Um, there was a lot of, of officers, a lot, um, a lot of law enforcement. Uh, there was a police woman who was quite amazing. And she just kept telling people just to, to go, to go. You know, law enforcement said that they had over 800 officers dispersed throughout this entire event. I'm sure you were, when you were there, you saw several of them. When the chaos happened, when those shots began to ring out, what were the officers' temperament? What was their posture? What were their, their posture like? Were they frantic? Were they trying to search for victims? Were they looking for shooters? What did you see from the officers? Yeah, I was on the other side of Union Station, so I didn't even know there had been a shooting, to be honest, um, until a little bit after the event. Um, but the officers were just very concerned with the crowd. The ones I saw on the west side were very much clear the area, get out, get out, get down, um, just very concerned, I think, for the public. 
um, and facing and toward the public and trying to get everyone out of the area and get everyone to safety. And I just have to ask you, just coming out of this right now, talking to me, how do you feel? What's your temperament right now? And I'm just really devastated because we, I, I, I hear about these things and I see these things in other places. And to think that this happened right here in our community, meters from or, or yards from where we were, it just it 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 just feels it feels help. I, I just it feels frustratingly just that there's there's not a safe place now, you know. In an area with over 400 million guns proliferating here in America, it's a sentiment shared by several people. Lisa Ermacher, thank you very much for sharing this moment with us. Stay safe. We're going to be joined now by senior investigative correspondent Aaron Katursky and ABC News contributor Bob Boyce, who is a former chief of detectives for the New York City Police Department. Aaron, I want to start with you. What are you hearing? What do we know about these big gatherings that are always cause for massive police presence? We're told hundreds of thousands were there today. Right in All right, we're having some difficulties so right there. We're going to go to Bob Boyce right now. Bob, uh, what are police doing right now after an incident just like this? They're speaking to witnesses and they're gathering in right all their uh, evidence from the crime scene. So those shell casings out there, they're, they're going to help you out and figure out how many shooters there are. Importantly to note that they have two arrests. And from what I can see from what the chief said, it's just, and I understand her frustration, you plan, you, you put all your things in motion, you bring outside agencies in, and this still happens. But that's unfortunately part of these things. <clears throat> in every celebratory event, there could be trouble, and you have to plan for that. So when you look at these things like that, I think they're on their way to something right now, those two arrests, from the tone they mentioned. Also, witnesses and video, a lot goes into these things to determine what's happening. Uh, also, the young lady um, who, who spoke, I understand her frustration at all. This was a great day. Kansas City uh, has, is a great fan base for professional sports. Everybody knows that. And so to see this happen, it's frustrating. And you can see it coming out now. Uh, Aaron, I want to get back with you. Hopefully your sound is working right now. You've been uh, there right now reporting on this as soon as this incident has been happening. What are you hearing? We know that these big gatherings are always a cause for massive police presence. We're told hundreds of thousands of people were there today. The hundreds of thousands were there and hundreds of police officers were there. And yet, Ike, they were no deterrent. You heard the police chief say that the shooting unfolded right in front of law enforcement officers who were meaning to keep the crowd and the Super Bowl celebration safe uh, and these shots rang out. We have not heard any evidence thus far to suggest that this had any kind of terrorism motive or was meant as a political statement or, or fueled by some kind of social grievance. Instead, what we're hearing is this is leaning toward some kind of uh, crime, some kind of dispute or, or whatnot between uh, individuals. They have two people in custody who may be the police's best opportunity to figure out why these shots were fired as this crowd was breaking up. The police said all of the Kansas City Chiefs players are accounted for. Those two people are in custody. There may yet be additional suspects we'll see, but one person is dead and as many as 15 shot. And Bob, I want to come back to you right now. We know that police, this is still an active investigation. The scene is still very active. We know that as soon as this happened, police surrounded the area and started that process. Right now and moving forward, what exactly are police officers doing? Again, going through the area, finding out what's going on, looking at social media, see what people are saying that you don't know about. This handheld video and cell phones, key role here too. It was, it was a big role. They're trying to put something out there to see if they can get that back in. Now, the, uh, the video of the scene, let us know what happened. Tell us how to go forward. Big problem here, everybody seems to be wearing red. So it's going to be tough to identify the shooter on, the, on, the, on these tapes. And Bob, I want to talk about another issue right now. How concerning is it that individuals can come into an event like this where we see 800, 900,000, even upwards of a million people, but still coming to an event like this armed, armed with firearms? How concerning is that for police officers? It, it's, it's the biggest problem we have in policing today is the uh, how many weapons are out there. You mentioned 400 million. That's that's a, probably an estimate, uh, a, a conservative estimate. So that's a big problem. Also, getting those guns off the street for people who shouldn't have them, ghost guns, all kinds of things come into this thing. But as, as always, 
police run into a situation where they know they could be shot while everybody's running away. I think they, you know, both the mayor and the chief said that, and, must, and those of us in law enforcement understand that as well. You are going to put your life on the line in these situations, so it's frustrating. You can't have a perfect event, unfortunately, in this country. Unfortunately not. And Aaron, I want to come back to you uh, right now. We know that this city, uh, they're known for these events. And we know that other cities moving forward, they're going to have these events, obviously, every single year. How can police officers and how can the community make sure that they're safe moving forward, even though we know these events will continue to happen? Well, you, you, you wonder, right? Uh, uh, all the Kansas City Chiefs players have been accounted for. Will, will sports franchises subject their players to these kinds of very public celebrations uh, in, in the future? I, I, I happen to be from Boston originally, and you know, you, you've seen the parades there where they're on duck boats in these open-air boats. Uh, that, that now perhaps uh, has teams thinking differently. In all likelihood, it won't. Uh, there will be some accommodation for safety and security and then they'll, they'll move forward. But uh, as Chief Boyce well says, there are 400 million guns in circulation, and so police have to know that there are going to be people inside the crowds uh, that are going to be armed, and they have to account for that. The troubling factor we've seen is how quick people are now to use them. Disputes that may have been resolved through an argument or a fist fight now increasingly in the country are being resolved with gunfire. We don't know whether that's the case here, uh, but police are now uh, going to be urgently searching for why these shots were fired in the first place. Again, one person, one victim killed, at least 10 to 15 people injured. Uh, we saw Stacy Graves, the police chief there over there in Kansas City, say that two, detect, uh, two detained gunmen uh, from this shooting labeled them as a few bad actors. And then we saw her say that she was angry. She was angry that this incident happened under her watch. Bob, I want to ask you this question right now. Talk to me about the temperament and the state of mind of police officers after an event like this happening under their watch. I, you, you, you see these things and, and, and the, the, the planning that goes into it, and you have pre-meetings with multiple agencies, everybody's on the same page, everybody's communicating, you have frozen zones, you have sectors, all these things you put into place, and these things can still happen uh, because you can't control. Now, I don't know if they did bag searches, I don't know if they had you know, gates uh, letting people access, that happens a lot too. We do it in New York, and if you see Times Square, it's, it's uh, on New Year's Eve, it happens all the time. But again, um, these things can happen anywhere. You have people up on rooftops looking down. Unfortunately, this is a post-event uh, situation. People are leaving. I'm not saying anybody let their guard down. That didn't happen because they ran to it. But sometimes a push, uh, a shove, a bump it can lead into something like this. And right now, police officers, what specifically are they looking for? We know that two people have been detained. We know that obviously the injured have made it to their respected area hospitals. But in this part of the investigation, the moments after, what exactly are police officers looking for? Well, I think if you look for it right now, you just see evidence. You go where the evidence takes you. You find out what mistakes this person made, these shooters, if they have two, and I believe so, they do. Um, you look for that, that evidence you collect and you act on it repeatedly. How many shooters did you have determined by shells on the ground? What are these people telling you that you arrested? Because they arrested more than just the two shooters. There's other people in custody as well. What did they see? What did they tell us? Is there anything going on within the community itself? There's a gang issue in an urban area. That has to be looked at. Was it just like people carrying a gun? Was it an old grievance? You don't know. But the more people you talk to, the more information you get. So that's going on right now. All right, Aaron, Bob, thank you both for the information. We will continue this. Much more news ahead here on ABC News Live. In today's big story, House Republicans under growing pressure after losing George Santos's former seat. How the shrinking of their already razor-thin majority could impact efforts to address the migrant crisis and provide more money to Ukraine. I'll speak with ABC News Deputy Political Director Avery Harper. And in our spotlight, federal health officials sounding the alarm over the use of vapes among middle schoolers. Our power weighs in on the push to protect our nation's children.
Housewives of Beverly Hills star Erica Jane. Celebrity attorney Tom Girardi. This story was a nuclear explosion. Today, several victims will get a chance to finally meet Erica Girardi. And that's sort of a loss for what to say. Did you see the documentary? Yeah. The Housewife and the Hustler? I did. I wanted Erica to say, I'm sorry, face to face. Erica, why did it take you so long? The Housewife and the Hustler 2, only on Hulu. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families Trump. here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. First thing in the morning. There's a lot going on. Yet another avalanche warning that's up. To catch you up with what happened overnight. A dangerous ice storm is impacting the morning commute. What's happening today, escalating tensions in the Middle East. What people are talking about, the migrant crisis. Fast, straightforward. With some fun in between. How does billionaire sound? Sounds good to me. The moose started chasing a dog. First thing in the morning. America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. On ABC News Live. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. It's lunchtime in America, so what are we serving up? Well, how about everything you need to know? You know, that sounds pretty good. Give it to me. Your health, your money, breaking news, pop culture, with the biggest stars, music, trends, and of course, good food. GMA 3, what you need to know. A third hour of GMA in the afternoon. So join us, afternoon. For everything you need to know. I love Give that. It to me. So the question is... Okay, here we go. Are you kidding me? What would you do? You just won't believe what people do when they think no one's watching. And this season, I brought Sarah Haynes and Kamau Bell along for the ride. All right, let's break it. Is John Theonis here? I was here all the time. The all-new season of What Would You Do premieres Sunday night on ABC. House Republicans under growing political pressure while grappling with border security and U.S. foreign aid. I'm like a Jachi in Washington. In today's big story, Speaker Mike Johnson already razor thin majority, shrinking even further after a Democrat's special election victory in New York. The potential impact on the debates over immigration in Ukraine in this critical election year, and in our spotlight, federal health officials sounding the alarm over the use of vapes among middle schoolers. Our panel weighs in on the push to protect children from nicotine addiction. But we begin with our big story. House Republicans under mounting political pressure as their razor-thin majority shrinks even further. Democrat Tom Suozzi winning the special election on in New York's Long Island last night, flipping the seat once held by disgraced former Congressman George Santos. That means House Republicans can now only afford two defectors in any party-line vote. The GOP conference also facing questions over its rejection of a bipartisan border deal negotiated between the White House and the Senate. It's also refused to consider a $95 billion foreign aid bill that already cleared the Senate and would provide more money to Ukraine. House Republicans last night did manage to impeach Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas by a single vote, despite providing no evidence he committed an impeachable crime. Republican House Speaker Mike Johnson today saying his members are now working to provide solutions on the border and Ukraine, but offering no specifics. So what we're doing right now is we, the House is working its will. The House Republican Conference we just met an, an hour ago uh, with all the members, and there are lots of ideas on the table of how to address these issues. We have to actually solve the problems and not just uh, take political posturing as, as has happened. 
Meanwhile, the White House trolling Speaker Johnson today, posting this Valentine's Day card to social media, reading, quote, roses are red, violets are blue, the border deal was crushed because of you. Joining me now, ABC News Deputy Political Director Avery Harper. Avery, how are you today? Nice to meet you. Uh, <laughs> we're going to start with this special election. Speaker Johnson already having trouble getting all of his members on the same page. What can Americans expect with an even slimmer GOP majority in the House? I think that Americans can expect for this Congress that has been uh, notoriously unproductive for it to be even more difficult for them to pass uh, legislation. Uh, as you mentioned before, uh, the GOP can now only afford for two Republicans to defect on party line votes. And we know that uh, Republicans have made it a point not to work across the aisle with Republicans, uh, with Democrats, excuse me, on numerous uh, agenda items. Uh, and in fact, I, I mean, it was the reason why Mike Johnson is become the Speaker of the House. And so I, I think it's going to be even more difficult for them to pass some legislation. Now, we've all seen how difficult of a time Speaker Mike Johnson has had attempting to steer his party forward all on the same bus, especially after yesterday's impeachment of Secretary of Homeland Alejandro Mayorkas. Now, how tough does that job now become with the reality of an even slimmer Republican majority in the House? Right. It becomes uh, really tough. Listen, if uh, Tom Swasey was sworn in and was able to vote on that uh, uh, impeachment vote yesterday, it would have been a tie. Uh, and so uh, that presents a real issue for Mike Johnson and for Republicans uh, if they are trying to push forward on uh, conservative agenda items. Uh, you know, this is uh, Tom Swasey's win really eating away at that razor thin, that very, very tiny majority that Republicans have. Now, Avery, a source telling ABC News that Speaker Johnson has requested to meet one-on-one -on -one with President Biden to find a path forward on U.S. foreign aid to Ukraine, Israel, and Taiwan. But the source says that the president has refused. Now, does the speaker have any leverage left right now? Right. Well, we saw in the White House briefing today, Karine Jean-Pierre, the, the White House press secretary, she said that uh, at this point, Mike Johnson is negotiating with himself. Uh, the fact is that the, the bipartisan border deal is the result of a fight that House Republicans won. They wanted for uh, the border crisis to be addressed, uh, and, and they got that, a bipartisan uh, deal, uh, conservative legislatures uh, working to make sure that deal was ironclad. And it was because of his leadership and pressure uh, from Donald Trump, uh, and even some of these House members citing political reasons, not wanting for uh, Biden to look good during an election year, uh, that that bill did not happen, that that passage did not happen. And so uh, there is a, a lack of a feeling that he is operating in good faith, and that's going to make it difficult for him to move forward. Now, Avery, I want to ask you one more question. Swazi, he's a Democrat who won his race focusing mainly on immigration concerns, a hallmark campaign issue for the GOP. Is this a bad sign for Republicans moving forward? Well, listen, I think that this was a very special case. Uh, you have to remember that this is uh, this was uh, New York's third congressional district. This was the seat that George Santos held. Uh, and so this is a Republican Party that was reeling from scandal. Uh, also, Tom Swasey is a special sort of candidate. He's somebody who held that seat before for three terms. Uh, he is someone who is a known quantity uh, in that area. Not only was he a congressman, but he was a county executive. He was uh, a mayor in a town uh, in that community. And so uh, he is someone who came in as a known quantity and was able to uh, rack up the support he needed to take that seat back and to flip it blue. Uh, I do think that for uh, Republicans, as they are uh, trying to maintain their razor thin or grow uh, their majority in the House, it's going to be difficult uh, when you have a, a, a conference that is so uh, focused on ideological purity, uh, when you have an enormous amount of pressure to embrace the far right. That is not going to do well in districts like this one. So it'll be interesting to see what it turns out uh, in November. All right, Avery, stick with us right now. We're going to bring in the big story to the rest of our panel. Joining me with Avery Tay is ABC News contributor and Sirius XM radio host Mike Muse, ABC News contributor and former Republican Congresswoman from Virginia, Barbara Comstock, and Democratic strategist Alencia Johnson. Now, Barbara, I want to start with you. Let's talk about your party right now. We just saw Swazi run on immigration, a historically Republican talking point, and win. What does this mean for your party ahead of the 2024 election? Well, it's a big problem. And listen, Tom was on my hall. He's a great guy. It was a win for normal. And he did what Republicans aren't allowed to do. He ran his own campaign. He distinguished himself from both President Biden and from his party. And he did what he needed to do for his district. 
Republicans aren't being allowed to do that. They're being forced to toe the MAGA line all the time and all stick together and do whatever dumb thing that Marjorie Taylor Greene wants them to do, like vote on the impeachment of, you know, Mayorkas yesterday. That's not helpful if you're in a swing district. And, you know, so that is going to be a big problem going forward. Now, Alencia, I'm coming to you now. For Democrats looking at what just happened in New York's congressional race, is this a switch in immigration stances, a viable strategy moving forward? Listen, I think this is actually helpful for Democrats because what is happening between this race, what happened with the impeachment vote, what happened with the bill last week, actually is able to put us not only on the defense but on the offense about the immigration policies that we believe in. Listen, the Democrats have been talking about bipartisan legislation. It's obvious Republicans want to continue to play politics. And so as they've seen in this race, it is going to be a losing issue. And there's a lot of evidence for Democrats to use, as I keep saying, cut the campaign ads because you have all of the GOP members talking about this on the record. Now, Mike, we saw how weather was a big issue related to turnout in this special election. What else can you foresee affecting turnout down the road? I don't think weather is going to become an issue come November. In the mere fact of once November comes, I think that is when America is going to recognize the high stakes that we're in. In particular, we are such a divided nation on partisanship. Uh, the presidential election race is going to come down to the margins, and it's going to come down to independent voters. And what they're going to be looking at is who can handle immigration the best. Obviously, reproductive rights will definitely be top on the agenda, but coming up on the very close second will be immigration. And if the Democrats can take a hold and own that, that will work to their advantage, and particularly within the suburbs of major cities that are possibly facing these immigration complications. And it's going to be a challenge to see how can the GOP reclaim that narrative if they can at all. In particular, the independents are really, too, going to be looking at what we are geopolitically uh, with NATO and also, too, with Ukraine in order to not to prevent a larger scale operation where troops on the ground will have to possibly uh, be defending our NATO partners uh, against Russia. And so the independents are really looking at that very closely. And Avery, I want to end with you now. Expanding Republicans' majority in the House is proving to be an uphill climb. What message, if any, can Republicans cling to that can help them convince voters to support them come November? Well, I think that we're going to see Republicans uh, continue to hammer uh, the border and, and blame Democrats uh, for the issue of the border, uh, even if it means them not uh, passing legislation to address it uh, this year ahead of the, the 2024 elections. Uh, look, I, I don't think that uh, what happened in uh, New York's third congressional district is necessarily reflective of uh, what's going to happen in suburban swing districts across the country. Again, I mentioned the special dynamics uh, of that race. Uh, the the fact that this is a, a Republican Party that was reeling from scandal after George Santos, the fact that Tom Swazi was a known quantity uh, in that district. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. Mike, Barbara, Alencia, and Avery, thank you as always. Now, coming up in our spotlight, a new warning from a CDC report about middle schoolers and vaping. My panel and I talk about the health concerns after the break. Whenever news breaks. We are here in Israel, a nation at war after that brutal surprise attack by Hamas. On the ground in Ukraine, reporting from Lewiston, Maine. The scene of a horrific mass shooting. ABC News Live is right there everywhere. From the scene of that deadly missile strike in Dnipro, Ukraine. Reporting from the earthquake in Turkey. In Rolling Fork, this tornado tore through this little town. From the most devastating disaster in Hawaii. From Charleston, South Carolina, on the 2024 campaign trail. In Iceland. Let's go. Yay! Traveling with the president in Mexico City. Wherever the story. From the front lines. From southern Israel. Outside the Gaza Strip. In Beirut. From the FBI. Reporting from the nurses on the picket line. Here at 10 Downing Street in London. Streaming live to you. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. We're going to take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. ABC News Live. You're streaming ABC News Live. ABC News Live. Streaming free everywhere. America's number one streaming news. I have a point of contact. They're expecting us? This is our secret world we have. Do you think we're going to be safe? I don't know. This is my pen. Inside that pen is a slice of human brain. These are assassinations that people are going to be murdered. Definitely. There's really no telling what some of them will do. I did, I did, I did, I did, I did. Oh my God, oh. It's 
happening everywhere and anywhere. Wow. So the question is... Okay, here we go. Oh Are you kidding me? What would you do? You just won't believe what people do when they think no one's watching. And this season, I brought Sarah Haynes and Kamal Bell along for the ride. All right, let's break it. Is John Theonis here? Yeah. I was here all the time. The all-new season of What Would You Do premieres Sunday night on ABC. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. All right, in today's spotlight, the CDC out with a new report warning that the use of vapes among middle schoolers is on the rise. According to the latest youth tobacco survey, vapes were the most popular tobacco product for kids under the age of 18. And though there was a significant decline in tobacco product use for high school students, the data shows an alarming increase among middle schoolers. The concern now, a growing number of them are becoming addicted. Let's bring back my panel, Mike, Barbara, Alencia, and joining our panal, ABC News medical contributor, Dr. Alencia. Lok Patel. Dr. Patel, I want to start with you. The 